um, work session of the North Kingstown School Committee. I'm going to call the meeting to order. So if everyone could rise and say the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we'll make sure in the future that we at least pull the flag out to where we can see it. I know it's over there. It's got lost in the transition from the play. Okay. Lorene, could you please call the roll call? For Linda Avanzato. Here. Bill Boyd Benson. John Biscardin. Here. Larry Cerisi. William Munch. Present. Kimberly Page. Here. Richard Welsh. Here. Julia Held. Student representative. Thank you. Lorraine, could you do calendars, please? March 27th, business meeting, 7 p.m., North Kingstown High School Auditorium. March 29th, policy subcommittee meeting, 10.30 a.m., Central Administration Building. April 6th, Good Friday, schools and offices closed. April 9th, Town Council's preliminary budget hearing for school budget. April 9th, also CELAC meeting, Central Administration Building. April 13th, Professional Development Day, no school for students. April 16th to April 20th, spring recess, schools closed. Thank you. Lorraine, when you were reading through the calendar, I don't believe that we have a CELAC rep anymore. Um, could you remind us that we um, have, um, that we need to put that on the calendar, it's, I mean on the agenda at some time? Um, yeah, Marianne says it was Larry Sarisi. You had appointed him a couple of meetings ago. Oh, we did appoint Larry? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. Sorry. Okay. Um, presentations and recognitions. Dr. Jay. Well, I just want to um, make a couple of um, recognitions tonight, um, and that is um, that uh, we have a couple of very impressive grants that have just come in. One is a 21st century grant. Um, and I'm going to do a lot more to uh, go into some details about what that is next time because we're going to be um, making a presentation about Davisville Elementary and we'll have some of the people from our COSI program here to help me do that. But um, this is a grant that helps uh, with Title I services. Uh, specifically, this will provide 120000 or so a year for the next five years um, at uh, Davisville Middle School and Quidnesset Elementary. Um, for after-school programs to help uh, students and families. So that's a, that's a big deal. Uh, we, it is a very competitive grant, and North Kingstown was uh, one of the, the groups to get that. So that we're very fortunate to have that. It's going to help a great deal. Um, Dr. Humber, do you want to talk about our RIDE mini-grant we also received just recently? Yes, we were very fortunate to uh, apply with about eight other districts for uh, a grant from the Rhode Island Department of Education, and it is to continue the work with the Common Core Standards, uh, but this time in, uh, the, with a focus on English language arts. So we've been working uh, already uh, through, gr through grant funding uh, with the Dana Center to do the math curriculum that's aligned to the Common Core Standards, and now we will have an opportunity opportunity to replicate that work, but doing it with the English language arts. So we're moving forward with that. The framework is completed, and we'll be starting uh, right at the end of this month. That's all I have for now. All right. I do have a couple recognitions that I received some, from some of the principals. Um, Wendy Amelot wanted us to recognize Deb Alban and Kim Johnson, who took the initiative to have a math night at Forest Park, which was extremely well attended by the entire staff and, um, and parents and students, and it was helped the, the kids with learning their math. Also from Stony Lane, um, Mr. Ferrario asked that I recognize Bryce Rick Richter, um, who was the geography, binner, geography B winner. Uh, he will compete <coughs> in the district at Rhode Island College on March 30th. From Wickford Middle, uh, Terry Merkel asked me to recognize Christina Miles, who is the art teacher at Wickford Middle. She won an Art Reach Grant Award for $750, um, which is awarded by the Rhode Island Art Education Consortium, PPAC, and the Rhode Island Monthly. And uh, I have one more, and then, and then I'll go to you guys. Okay. Um, at the high school, 
Tom Kenworthy asked me to recognize the senior wrestler, Greg Curvin, who was recently named the Southern Division Male Athlete of the Month for February by the Rhode Island Interscholastic League. And T and Lynn Serenin also asked me to recognize the academic decathlon team, which won sixth place at the state competition this week. It was the best showing of any North Kingstown team um, that they've done in this com competition. And we can say thank you to their advisors, Chris Franz and Tom Doran. This is Evan Zotto and then um, Dr. Jay. Just briefly want to recognize the, um, the mock trial team. Uh, they had a trial about two weeks ago against Wheeler, and Wheeler's program is a class at the school. So they're in there every week or several times a week working on the mock trial, whereas ours is a club. And I'll tell you, even though Wheeler was given the decision by the judges, I have to take issue with it. <laughs> but anyway, good job <laughs> for both sides. But it, really, North Kingstown was phenomenal. I have to recognize the work that's gone into it. They are so skilled after not having that many hours behind the wheel. The other thing I wanted to just briefly mention is congratulate everyone involved in um, our production of Footloose. It was absolutely phenomenal. We had incredible talent, including some members sitting at our table here whose offspring were involved, and they just did a great job. So congratulations to all of them. That, that, you stole my thunder. I, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say I, I would be remiss without saying congratulations to Norma Kayaza and to uh, Bob Schaefer for the, the great work that they have done with our kids um, in Footloose. If you had a chance to see that performance, it was absolutely stellar. This auditorium was filled four times over the weekend, and it just kind of provides for me a reminder of, you know, what is really important to this community uh, during budget season. You know, that, that is such a draw, and, and they do such a tremendous job that it brings us all together for a very positive reason. So uh, congratulations to them. Any other recognitions? Mr. Welch. I also want to say that uh, having attended the uh, play this weekend, that such enthusiasm and energy from these young students, they did an excellent job. And the folks that were with me couldn't, couldn't uh, say enough wonderful things about the performance of these youngsters. Uh, <clears throat> the, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we did justice. I'm going to pick on you for a second, Madam Chairman, on the grant that um, was received for $120,000. Um, my understanding is that's $120,000 a year for the next five years. That's true. That's correct. <clears throat> and, you know, um, sometimes we look at, at our employees as, well, it's their job to do that. Um, this is a hell of a, a, a great thing that these folks have put together for our, our students uh, at Quidnesset and Davisville Middle School. And I would l really like to have them come before us and explain exactly what they're going to do because I want to stand up and give them an ovation for the work that they've done. Um, it's, it's not just a job, it's, it's, a, it's a vocation, it's, a, it's spirited, and these people have done a wonderful job for our community. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think Dr. Oje was your... Yeah, I'd like to organize that to occur uh, at our next meeting when we go over the Davisville Elementary proposal. So seeing there's no other recognitions, we'll move on to citizens' comments. This is a work session, so people can comment now in the beginning of the meeting, and they can comment at any time before we take a vote um, to approve things. Uh, what I ask is that people just come up to the mic so that I can see you, that you want to speak. So is there anyone who would like to speak currently at Citizens' Comments? I'm sorry I didn't get here to uh, sign a sign-up sheet. My name is Richard August, 79 Apple Tree Court. <clears throat> um, Madam Chair, last week I joined Mr. Welsh on Smith Hill for the House Labor Committee hearing on the binding arbitration uh, bills that are before the House of Representatives and also the perpetual contract bills uh, that were on, on there for the firefighters and police. And um, my impression of, of that evening was a little bit distressing in that the full committee wasn't even there for, for the start of the hearing. 
And after a couple of union um, lobbyists testified, members of the committee started to leave to the point where there was the chairman, uh, Anastasia Williams, and I believe there were five representatives. Um, of those six people, I think all five of them were um, union supporters. So I, I hung around because I felt it was important to at least to have um, a chance to express opposition, particularly to the binding arbitration measure. And it was interesting because once the union representatives were, were through, and actually Chairperson um, Williams had the uh, pros and cons alternate. And once you got to the point where most of the people that were going to testify were all cons, she said, oh, well, if you're going to get up there and say something that's been said, just ditto the persons ahead of you, and which is fine. And I got up and basically supported some of what Mr. Welsh had said earlier regarding the budget in this town and how it's, how it's affected uh, the schools and what the anticipated cuts are going to be next year without proper funding. And there was some nodding of an assent there, but I think it would be, I don't know, I know on the agenda you have a resolution. Hopefully this resolution will pass and hopefully um, this whole thing will not come to anything in the session of the legislature. But it was somewhat disturbing to see the trend that seemed to be taken. Having said that, I also want to say that last week I attended the, force, uh, the high school PTO meeting. And I listened to Mr. Welsh and Superintendent O.J. make a pitch for the bond issue that is going to be voted on early next month. And one of the members there said, well, you're preaching to the choir, which, in fact, is probably the case. What struck me most was the fact that the emphasis had been on, this, on the roof at Davisville Middle School. But if you look at the list that uh, Dr. Roger presented, one point, more than $1.6 million is needed to comply with ADA requirements. And you can pay me now, you can pay me later. At some point, we're going to have to do those changes. And I don't know how to reach out to the community, but we have to do everything possible to make them understand what's at stake here. It's not just the roof and whether or not the roof is going to cave in. There's other things that have to be taken care of. And there's no way that we can get away with deferring $1.6 million of changes, modifications, alterations that are needed to comply with federal law. Excuse now, me. That's not is, correct. This is Mr. Uh, this is Citizen's Mr. Comment. Okay, this is Citizen's I'd like to comment, comment back to you on no, that, please. No, this is Citizen's Comment. Mr. Yeah. August, give the floor. The other thing I asked uh, Dr. Auger was, what is the status of this year's budget? And he replied, um, the deficit looks like it's about $300,000, which is the same number that uh, Mr. Draper testified to in court um, back in January. I hope that the plan that's been presented to the Auditor General is being followed because if we're still with $300,000 in the hole, that means for the next three months, that's $100,000 a month that has to be made up. And um, just listening to the news tonight of what's happening in Woonsocket, they're going to close the schools on April 5th unless the state ponies up their state aid early. They're going to close the schools on April 5th. Now, what that, what that means to the seniors in high school, I don't know. But that's how serious the situation is in this state. And not only Central Falls, which is the kind of the bellwether, but all over the place. So this, this deficit this year is very, very important. And I really hope that steps are being taken to make sure we do not end up this year with, with a deficit. Um, I don't know, I, this is not citizen interrogations, but I hope a member of the committee will ask what the, um, if there has been any feedback from the Auditor General with respect to the plan that's been presented. And I'd also wonder whether or not uh, there's been any word about when the NATO Wadovic special report is going to be received. So, uh, Superintendent Auger has stated several times in public that the cost, uh, the basic cost of running the school district is $46 million, And that includes uh, contractual obligations, mandates and regulatory regulation required um, expenditures. Now, can, as can I understand you, it, one of the 
Can you wrap your comments up, Mr. August? One of the things that, there's nobody else behind me, so give me a, another 30 seconds. One of the things that the NATO Wadovic report, as I understand it, is supposed to address is what is the cost of the basic education plan. And it would be very useful, I think, in terms of we're looking at next year's budget if we knew when we were going to see that report to find out whether or not the external experts agree with the $46 million. So I hope somebody will, will, will press that. So thank you very much. May I make a comment? Just no, I'm going to let the I, superintendent respond if you need to say anything, Dr. Roche. Well, all, all I'm going to say, I mean, this is on the agenda, Mr. August. I, I concur with you on a number of the issues and, and some of the questions that you had. Uh, once we get to them on the agenda, we'll go into some detail about that. Okay? May I make a comment? No. The, the oh, citizens thank thank comment. you very much. That's, thank you very much. Are there any other citizens for citizens' comment? All right, may, we may I make a point of order, please? What's your point of order? Why aren't we following our school department policy in the conduct of our school committee meetings? What specifically? You know what I'm talking saying? about. No, I. That what, was what happened? Comments. What happened to the topic of correspondence on the agenda? Oh, that is at the end. Oh, and what about uh, school committee comments? Well, those have been at the end. Well, they haven't. You haven't had them at the end. You, take, you took them off the agenda. You and Mr. Wells did many years, you know, almost a year ago. No, so we, we had them on in, was it, Lorene, <coughs> was Excuse it me. in January May I that we had them on? And, school uh, committee comments? Yeah, we had school committee comments on here a little while ago, but we were never getting to that part of the agenda. So you took them off? Yes. Yeah, since last January you've taken them off. So right. why don't we take everything else off the agenda? All right. Thank you, Mr. Mudge. It's now Superintendent's report. <coughs> thank you. Um, I just want to uh, follow up a little bit on what Mr. August uh, just said about the bond meetings. We've had two bond <coughs> meetings so far with PTOs. They have been uh, excellent meetings, and um, you know you get you get an appreciation for how much uh, people you know really are interested in this in this message and um, really have a lot of questions because there is a, a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, the bond is, is critical uh, not only to health and safety issues and ADA issues, as Mr. August pointed out, but it's also a very good deal for North Kingstown taxpayers. This is something that we get a, a, a significant reimbursement on if we do it this way. It is, it is um, uh, work that will need to be done no matter what. Uh, it's just a matter of time, and uh, it's, it makes a great fiscal sense, great financial sense to um, do this uh, with that reimbursement in mind. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I have a number of meetings uh, set up in the next few weeks. Um, you, can, you can get to them by going uh, on our website and getting that calendar. I've, I've sent them out in the listserv, um, and I will be continuing to communicate with the community um, about, you know, bond issues. I plan on sending a listserv every Monday to keep you up to date with, you know, whatever's the latest uh, information and questions that are out there. I'm also preparing uh, an annual report document that's going to go out to every household in the community, whether they, those people in that household have kids or not, uh, to let them know about um, how we're meeting our strategic plan, um, uh, all the good things that are going on in this district, uh, our, our response, our, our commitment to financial, um, you know, responsibility. Uh, information about the bond, information about our upcoming budget uh, issues. Um, the second thing I'd like to talk about is that uh, it's been a while and uh, we've, we've been going through some uh, negotiations and I feel that we are just about ready to prepare um, uh, a presentation for our next school committee meeting about the use of the Davisville Elementary Building and I plan on having a meeting on the 21st at Davisville Elementary for members of the neighborhood. They, they have formed kind of a little coalition of people who have uh, asked me to communicate with them regularly, and I want to give them an opportunity to hear about this information a few nights before our school committee meeting. So if they feel they need to come and talk to that issue, they are certainly welcome to do so. Um, and so uh, we'll be hearing a lot of information on that, and, and I'm excited about it because it is something where we can save this district a considerable amount of money. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, speaking of saving money, 
is that um, I think pe people are generally aware that the town council met last night and they talked about our 2012 budget and it was a recommendation from uh, Mr. Embry, the town uh, manager, to uh, to support us with a 4% increase, which is exactly what um, I had asked for and that the school committee had asked for. And I appreciate Mr. Embry um, making that recommendation. I just want to be clear, however, that, you know, I am certainly going to continue to do everything I can to get community support from uh, the parents of our students and from the community as a whole through this annual report and through listservs and through work, uh, any communication I can, newspapers, whatever it takes, um, to let people know that we are not out of the woods yet. We have a recommendation on the table, but we do not have a vote yet. And, and that's important to know. Um, I, I think sometimes people feel like they, well, I read in the paper that the, the manager supports a 4%, so <coughs> I can kind of lay off now. I don't have to keep the pressure on. Uh, I think just the opposite is true. We've seen in, in recent years where uh, a recommendation was made uh, people got a little bit complacent because they felt things were going in our, in our direction and may not have put the pressure on that they thought otherwise. And last minute, the vote actually happened, and it was significantly worse than what we had hoped for. Uh, so we, we really need to do everything we can to convince members of the council um, of how important it is to this uh, school department that we have that 4% increase. Uh, as you know, the, the the budget that we have passed is one that is is difficult. It's, uh, you know, $1.4 million in cuts to get to that 4% increase. And uh, it wasn't easy. There's a lot of things on there that are going to be hard to absorb, but, but they're doable. Um, after this point, going any further than that, they get that much harder and uh, to the point where, uh, God forbid, you know, we're looking at getting rid of a lot of um, programs and and people and things that we have come to expect in our school district and the things that make the school district a, a tremendous one. So, um, you know, I just want to reemphasize the point that uh, <coughs> it is important to keep the pressure on, and, uh, and I will certainly do all I can to let people know when the important meetings are for, for, for the town council to continue their discussions about this and when they intend on taking their vote. Um, I believe that is all I have for right now. May I comment, please? Do you want to ask the qu superintendent a question? Uh, yes. I have, uh, obviously, I disagree with your comments regarding uh, that you have promulgated on the Internet, okay, and to the towns about the need of our, these the changes at the high school. You use words as asbestos is dangerous, okay, and... Uh, the uh, imminent failure of certain things and the roofs. I would ask if asbestos is dangerous, and I have correspondence I'm going to submit uh, as soon as I get done speaking here, ask the town manager to get OSHA to come in or any building inspector that would review these so-called ADA violations, which I believe is incorrect and we do not have, the so-called code violations, with possibly one exception, the uh, tiles uh, that we're talking about here, which cost about $40,000. Those code violations are, in fact, not code violations. And I've asked him to substantiate that with the authority. Get the fire marshal in here and find out if we have code violations. Madam Chairman. Okay. Order, so please. they had a question. What, what's your point of order? So I thought with, there was a question. Yeah. All this. So with that, and what what is so going with on here? That, excuse me. Wait, I, so let me hear the point me. of order. I haven't. Let me hear the point of order. And what is going on here with Mr. Budge? is he is regurgitating everything he has regurgitated before. He's written in the newspaper. Call he does not honesty. He, he does not think that the architect and engineers that surveyed all the buildings are qualified to make these assessments that were think we should sue him. at length. Okay. Mr. Mudge is more qualified than the, than the professionals that were hired. Right. What's wrong with hiring? Right. 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 move on. So my Mudge, point is, did you get to your question, my point please. is, I am going to submit my comments, and I want my comments to also go out and be put on the list serve to all the other parents and people in this community, okay? That list serve is not to be used as a propaganda machine for anyone. It should be open for the council 
And I will be sending my comments to you and the comments that I sent to the town council that articulated these same points. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. O'Shea, did we have a um, – was our bond approved by the Rhode Island Department of Education? Yes, it was. And was our bond approved by the Facilities Management Committee? <clears throat> yes. And does the Facilities Management Committee have people on it who are architect? I mean, not architects, but construction um, people? Yes. Do you know how many people or what their – their background is of the, of the people, and maybe this is Mr. Welch. This is also your question, since you're on the facilities committee. Well, <clears throat> the the chairman is uh, an HVAC contractor as well as a, a commercial utility contractor that does a lot of work at the University of Rhode Island, Rhode Island College, and at the state institutions. We have two two licensed electricians. We have a general contractor. We have the CEO <coughs> of a of a school private school, um, and all of these folks reviewed all of this work before it was sent to RIDE for their review and approval. Did we work with an architecture firm in bringing this before RIDE? The architecture firm um, that we hired, SMMA, also hired the engineers that were required. <coughs> this work was reviewed by the architect who's in charge of this work at RIDE by the name of Joe De Silva. Well, why don't so we get the, why don't we have, get the, excuse now, me. Now, we are in charge, I have the floor. Um, we ha are in charge of the superintendent, but it is the superintendent's job if, to have the basic running of the schools, I, I believe. Am I correct, Ms. Carroll? That's correct. So he is in charge of the listserv and what goes out and what is on there. Is there any, besides Mr. Mudge, is there any dissension among the school committee as to what the superintendent is sending out over the listserv in regard to the bond? Well, I don't know because I haven't seen it, so I can't. <clears throat> I'm not on the listserv, so I don't know. Would you like to be on the listserv, yeah, Mr. Musgarden? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ms. Uh, we'll Berkeley, sure could you make sure that we add in. Mr. Musgarden to the listserv? The Mrs. Avanzato. As a matter of fact, not only do I not have an objection, but I would note that I think Dr. Auger was trying to be careful not to um, tell people how to vote, but instead just to put the information out there and say and encourage people to vote, and that is part of his job. So I don't think that it was politically charged material. No, if, if I, I do not. If I could add to that point, you know, um, yes, I, I think I think time. if I am. If I am looking to back particular candidates or anything, that's totally inappropriate for me to do something like that. But when it comes to advocating for the health and safety <clears throat> and the well-maintained ma buildings in our district, I do not apologize to anybody about uh, asking them to vote a certain way. I mean, that is what I am paid to do, is to advocate for the, the good of our kids, the good of this community, and for a great educational program. And I firmly believe that in backing this bond, we are doing just that. We're going, to, we're going to have a better program. We're going to have better maintained buildings. It's going to be one less thing to worry about, and we're going to have, you know, just that many more resources to get to other important <coughs> building items down the road. Uh, if we don't do this, it just takes that much longer to get to those other pieces. And everybody knows that if you don't maintain your buildings appropriately, they cost more down the line. So, you know, it is absolutely ridiculous to me that anyone would object to this, uh, much less a school committee member. So, uh, you know, that's all I'm going to say on the issue. Mr. Mudge, you said what you said a million times. You said it right in front of Carolyn Diaz and Joe De Silva from Ride, yep. who have assured us that they've done everything they can with an architectural firm with the state legislature. Well, why so don't you get issue, OSHA in? Why don't you get OSHA in? Uh, I know. There's, there's always another group that we could get in. According to you, how about but according to everybody uh, else, this Mr. makes perfect sense. Dr. Yeah. J has so, the floor. So, you know, I'm all set with this, and I, I would just, you know, appreciate. Well, you're you're promulgating false and misleading Jay information. Dr. J has the floor. Okay, such I, as mold. Oh, I disagree with you. Mold, indoor air quality. We don't have mold and indoor air quality issues. Okay, really. Mr. Mudge, you know I'm going to. to I'm going to tell you why. No, Mr. Mudge, I'm going to ask you to, that you do not have the floor, and I'm going to talk over you just to make to emphasize that. So what I've heard is from the majority of the school committee here that we're going to allow Dr. Um, we have no, I shouldn't say allow, we have no problems with Dr. OJ um, continuing with any listservs on the bond. Um, 
Are there any other school committee member who would like to ask a question or comment on the superintendent's report? So you're declining my uh, request to, to uh, articulate my position? Point of order, yes. Madam Chair. Point of Excuse order. Excuse me? Yes. I am declining. The rest of the school committee is fine with Dr. Auger and what he is saying. So you're, yes, okay. you're, you're correct. I am saying, no, we aren't going to put out your point of view. If Thank you would you. like to put that out in the newspaper, as you've already done, I have. you may. I certainly will. Yes, Mrs. Avanzato. Well, I would just ask that members wait to be recognized. We have to have an orderly meeting. There's a lot of members, and everyone would like to be heard. <clears throat> so That's is true. there anyone else who would like to comment or would like to ask the superintendent a question on his report? Yes. You've already had your time, Mr. Mudge. Excuse me. I, you asked a question. Is that a member? I have a question on his report. Yes, yes. And I answered and your question. No, I didn't ask you the question. You just asked, does anybody have another question? I have a question. Please, okay, tell me. I don't know. What school do we have a mold you. indoor quality no, air Mr. issue? What school is that at? Okay, Mr. Mudge, you, you've already had your time. So is just answer the question. Else? Could somebody Who answer the question? Who would like to ask a question of Dr. Ajay? I'd like to ask him a Mr. separate Dr. question Dr. then. What's our bond deficit, like Mr. Okay. Mr. Mudge, has said? you've had your time. Okay. You're done. No, wait a minute. Wait, Mrs. Wait, 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 wait. Regarding the comments by Mr. August, when we get to that point in the agenda where we can discuss it, I would ask for an update on that situation. Will do. <coughs> I'm going to go to – is there anybody else who had a question? I'm going to go on to routine items on the consent agenda. Is there any items that need to be exempted <coughs> under the consent agenda? <coughs> yes, I have uh, B and, and uh, C3. So B and C3. Okay. Is there any? Yes, Mrs. Ovenzato. I had B also, but I can comment after Mr. Much. If there is no others, I'll take a motion on the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve the remainder of the consent oh, agenda. Excuse me. Second. Excuse me. The uh, meeting, uh, the minutes of, of the 28th, please. Which the ones? The uh, executive session I wasn't part of, so I can't comment on that. It would be uh, the uh, business meeting. So you're doing both A and A1 and A2? No, just A1. Uh, no, that's A2. A2 um, no, it's a is business a meeting. The executive session was A2. I'm not doing that. I did not participate in that oh, meeting. Okay, so no. it's only A1. A1. All right. All right. So there is a motion by Mr. Welch on the floor and a second by Mrs. Avanzato. Um, Lorene, uh, I mean, uh, could we have a roll call vote, please? Linda Avanzato. Yes. John Biscardin. Yes. Larry Cerisi. He's not here, sorry. Um, William Mudge. Uh, yes. Kimberly Page. Yes. Except for item A2 for me. Yes. Right, this is non-exempted consent items. Yeah, but we Both didn't. Pass this five to zero. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Mudge, you exempted A1. Uh, yes, because uh, I'm going to vote against accepting uh, A1. In general, I won't delay. Waste your time with my comments. All right. Um, I, I need to remember to start up. Is there a motion on A1? Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve by Mrs. Avanzato. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Welch. Uh, do you, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of A1 say aye. 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 All those opposed? I oppose. Not complete. <coughs> okay. Motion passes. If we could go on to item B. Mr. Mudge, you had a question about item B. Oh, first of all, is there a motion to approve item B? So moved. moved. Second. Okay. Did you get that, Lorraine? Yeah, second was John Garden, right? Uh, so was no, it was between the usual Linda, suspect. It was between Mrs. Avanzato and Mr. Welch. Oh, that's it, John. You've got to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a motion and a second. Mr. M Mudge, what is your... Um, in looking at the backup data on this, I think it was this item here that was on the agenda or was 
submitted back in January. And it looks like this, and I stand to be corrected, uh, is a matter of uh, buying software per item that SIDS inventory, behavioral support. Yes. And uh, training as well. I don't know if this includes training or not, to tell you the truth. I think I'm not under, sure if it I was on the agenda in January either. Well, no, but if you look at the backup information okay. that was provided, yep. Yep. you will see that it was there, mm -hmm. okay? And seeing that it was there, and if you look at it closely, you think, uh, you'll think you see that there was uh, uh, some training associated with that, which is fine. <clears throat> uh, my point is it was asked for in January, so is, is this evaluation information required for this year or next year? And why did we wait so long to get it? I, you know, I don't know specifically the answer to that question. I, I'm on, my understanding of it is that it's needed right now. Um, I believe we're getting it now because uh, we have grant funding approval to do it. Um, but uh, I don't know. I can, I can get your answers to you next time. But um, I just thought that I don't know specifically those uh, the answers to those questions. Okay, that's fine. And uh, uh, it's kind of similar to the uh, item three. Was uh, you know we're almost we got less than a couple months, or three months to left the school, and and I'm asking, or that's one of my questions that I asked before is uh, uh, why are these coming out so late in the year? Uh, uh, you know, if we, we've had the grant money, I believe, the, certainly the IDA money for, you know, basically the whole year. Uh, and, again, with three months. I think that was an issue of uh, Mrs. Santa making sure that she had the grant money available to her. There were some pieces of larger grants that she wasn't <coughs> sure she would have the discretionary money and um, realized at this point in the year that she does. Okay. Thank you. In my quick search of SIBs for our website, I did not see it come up on the January meeting time. The only time it's listed as coming up no. is this time. So uh, it may I, have I, been a similar um, um, computer program, but not the same thing. It was some I do recall, and I'm not sure if, if this is where the confusion is, we had the Lexia and the Symphony software programs. And that may be it. It may be it's just slightly different, um, but for the same department. And, and just for the sake of people who may not have the document in front of them, both, both of these items that Mr. Mudge referred to are both uh, grant funded, IDEA grant funded. Yes, Mrs. Avanzato. I just wanted to comment that oh. along with this agenda item, I wanted to note that Mrs. Santa did a good job with um, filling out the paperwork regarding bids that we had asked for and the sole source justification form is here checked off and fully filled out I just wanted to say that I appreciate that with the reasoning there um, that's something that we wanted done and we asked for and we've been doing on a regular basis so thank you to her for that is, my, my, is there any further discussion on this item just just to the point just to let you know is the purchase order was written back on January 26th that's why I asked the question Okay. And I would also like to note that the, the job orders you have on here are inappropriate to the wrong numbers. All right. <coughs> Lorraine, could we do a roll call vote? Honda Skyden. Yes. William Mudge. Yes. Page. Yes. Richard Welsh. Yes. Linda Avanzano. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number C3. Um, approval of appointment of RTI tutors. Do I have a motion on the floor? So moved. Second. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Mr. Mudd, you wanted to discuss this. I, you you would question. answer my question, so I'm, I'm fine. All right, all those in favor of approving C3, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion passes. <clears throat> that brings us to um, the unfinished business. Dr. Urge, the 2011-2012 school budget. I'm going to ask Mr. Draper to give us a little bit of report to follow up uh, with some of the comments that um, Mr. August made about, you know, where we stand with the 2011-12 budget right now. Uh, sure. The, the uh, next deficit report has uh, been prepared. 
Looks like um, for the month ended February will be around two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars in the red. Uh, we have not heard any information back in regards to the Wadavik audit, the letter with the deficit reduction plan to uh, Dennis Hoyle, uh, nor any opinion on the court case. Um, we contacted uh, Attorney Carroll um, late last week and early this week, see if there was any changes in that information, and nothing, is, nothing has come up on any of those fronts. Um, we are trending, as you're aware, in a positive direction. That's $50,000 since the last month. Um, that leaves uh, March, April, May, and June to cover the rest of the ground. So it depends on what basically what is not bought between now and then uh, to get us there. Mr. Buscardi. <clears throat> Speaking to that, Mr. Draper, is there a, um, a plan? Do you guys have, you know, line items that, that you – um, are going to reduce spending or stop spending to, in order to meet that? Yes, the, the, the deficit reduction plan more broadly uh, calls for leaving vacancies as possible uh, using temporary or uh, part-time um, solutions to get us through until the end of the year. Uh, we, we do um, have a vacancy, two vacancies actually in maintenance that have, have contributed to that. Um, you know, basically we're trying to cut corners wherever we can. Uh, between now and the end of the year. Thank you. you know, um, one thing I want to point out is, you know, like Mr. Draper said, we'll continue to look for any cost-cutting measures that we can find. Um, we also have, um, you know, if, if push comes to shove and it gets to be late in the year, there there is money in our um, our own. Um, what's the term I'm looking fund for? Fund balance. The fund balance. Thank you. And so, which is is above the number 250, so we're happy to report that. Uh, we're hoping that we will not have to go to that. Obviously, the, the issues that we put forward in the court case and in other places are that um, the town council has some responsibility here in the revenue projection issues that we've presented. So uh, we're, we're waiting. We're hoping that those things will turn in our favor. Um, we expect that they will, but we're waiting, and, and those are issues that we do not have a lot of control over in that regard. So, um, you know, there are some issues that we're waiting on, but we're confident that this number keeps going down, um, probably not as much as I would like either, Mr. August, um, but it does keep t trending downward, and I'm happy about that, and we'll continue to watch it. Um, I appreciate your comments about uh, my hometown, Woonsocket, Rhode Island, um, but uh, thank God we're not in that situation. Um, there's a big difference between $7 million and $250,000. And so, um, you know, I, we, don't, we don't have that situation, and I don't want anyone to think that we're even close to anything like that. And, um, you know, I, I feel confident that we're, one way or another, we're going to end up where, you know, we need to be. We're not going to be in a deficit at the end of the year. Um, and, um, you know, and hopefully some of these um, issues where we, there are audits and litigation and all that sort of thing will trend in our favor and uh, we'll solve a lot of these problems well before the year ends. But. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've tried everything we can to find out how soon these will be resolved, and we're not getting any answers, so. Mr. Welch. Yes, um, Dr. Auger, um, could um, maybe we get a, a report from uh, Ned on um, what we perceive might be this, the savings accumulated at this point on things like snow removal, heat and electric, uh, just so that we, you know, we have a, a better feeling of, of where that might be. Sure, because I'm sure that. those will also help to contribute right. to savings, uh, covering that, helping to cover that deficit. Absolutely, it's been that's been a big help to us in this process this year. Thank you, Mr. Mudge. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know a couple things about the budget. Uh, one is, uh, if you go to uh, current budget and. Uh, 20, uh, the 13 budget, you'll see that the uh, amount of revenues that's reflected that we receive for fiscal year 12 is only reflected as $10,364,000. Excuse me, Mr. Smudge, what page are you on? I'm on page uh, 13 of the 13 budget. Mr. Mudge, are you in the, the, the one that says? The, the current budget. The, February 27th budget that Dr. Hoag J submitted, that we submitted to the council. 
Sorry, go ahead. Mr. Lee, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, uh, if you look at the state the contributions here, uh, for fiscal year 13, it's the $10,812,000, okay? And in, 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 uh, and you're talking about the current budget, the 2011-2012 budget, not the 2012-2013 budget. I'm talking about the 2012 budget, this year's budget. I'm right, but the book you have in front of you is, if you're referring, is the book in front of you the 2012 it's, No, it's a 13. It is the 13 book. Okay, then that will not be That's what on. we're discussing well, right now. Can I just finish, please? I'm using the numbers out of here to talk about the 12 budget. Okay. Got it. Go ahead. Please finish. The appropriations that we received, okay, for t fiscal year 12 in total was $10,674,000. Why are we reflecting only $10,364,000? Are you including the Education Jobs Fund? Well, absolutely. Every other school district does, everyone I've checked, okay, and that was the direction from the Department of Education. And you, 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 you know, and, and you, so you can explain to me. It's the Education Jobs Fund that you're adding together with the state aid. Yeah. And in fiscal year 13. No, no, 12. Direction. No, I'm not talking 13. I, I understand that, but what I'm saying to you is in fiscal year 13, state aid is being increased by that amount. It's reflected in the general state aid. This year, in fiscal year 12, it was not distributed in that way. It was distributed as a federal grant. That's not correct. That's what I keep saying. And all the other school districts accounted for all of it. And the, what was appropriated? What was appropriated by our legislator? All we have to do is look, and we'll see that it was ten million six hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars last year. They swapped the money around, but they appropriated ten million six hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars. Or is there a further question, okay. Mr. Mudge, yes. or you just want to disagree? Yeah. Disagree. I'm asking for some budget clarity. Well, and you disagree with what Mr. Draper has given you. Yes, I am. Okay. I'm also interested in knowing in the 12 budget, how do we explain that we had a, uh, a $320,000 negative line item in the budget that we submitted to the town council last year? And what, the, what does that mean in terms of the, actually it started at 541000 We had a negative $541,000 that was in the budget that we sent to the town council last year. And all the numbers added up at the end, so it reflected a bottom line number that we gave to the council, but yet in there it had a negative $541,000. That, that was breakage, Mr. Mudge. Oh, and, and so what is breakage then? Can I jump Could in? Could I ask what is breakage? I'd like yes, to answer Dr. your question, Mr. Mudge. Mr. Mudge. He brought up this issue more times on this stage and wasted more of our time than, than, than should be permissible, okay? We, since I've been here, since Mr. Draper has been here, and this is his last meeting as our financial officer, I'm sure he's going to miss this regular probing from you, okay? We have had, You're on a we we have had audits there. one after another, including one that just came in a few months ago that was reported on at the town council. And you want to know how many of these gigs that you keep bringing up over and over and over again were reported on that audit? Zero. They didn't even mention this breakage issue that you continue to harass us about, that you make it out like it's the Watergate scandal around here. They didn't even mention it. It is. And we asked them specifically on your behalf, yep. taking up more of our time. Yep. Okay? So I think the, the people of this town need to know that everything that you bring up in this alarmist fashion, there's some kind of a conspiracy. We're the only district that doesn't do it this way. We're the only district that doesn't do it that way. It is outright false and is not a problem, certified so by people who know a heck of a lot more about accounting than you do. And if it were a problem, they'd tell us. They haven't told us. 
So I think you have very little credibility about these issues, and I wish you'd stop wasting our time on this stage. So uh, would you just ask me why we had the budget submission of 500 and You have that answer. I Mr. Draper just answered you. Excuse I'd like, me. I'd like us you to move a, on, please. Excuse yeah, me. I'm going to call if that was breaking, that answer about a dozen what, times what is it, since I've been What does it mean in terms of the budget submission? It meant we had a $541,000 revenue or Any surplus. Any member? Make a motion to move on. Second. So there's a motion to move on and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion carries. The CIP existing bond, future bond. Dr. Ajay, you, you've spoken on that already? I've already spoken on that. I'm uh, Excuse me. I'd like to speak about that then. I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Well, you have had, you've already spoken that once, Mr. Mudge. Yes. So what is your question that you would like at this time? I would still like to know, which has not been answered. In here, you promulgate that at Davisville. We have health and safety issues such as mold, indoor quality. Point of order, Madam Chair. Okay. Let him ask. What's your point okay. of order? Okay. Allowing a member to hijack the entire meeting. Oh, I'm asking for a question. Disorderly? He's I'll was there a, I'm going to let him ask Was the there a test done at Davisville Middle School for mold and for indoor, air indoor quality? And what was the results of the test? The result of that test performed approximately two months ago that the conditions were safe. And, and, and I think last year, too. Okay? That's, that's okay. because we... Yeah, because you did. Because, I know you did. Okay, yes. Let Mr. Draper answer the question, please. Be, because we received multiple complaints, what we've done over the last year is any time we have a leak, custodial staff immediately reports it. We call in for repairs. We have tried to stay on top of everything that's going on in that building as it arises. You only had, you corrected that last year, like the last storm, we didn't have any. But what we said is, you did what you hey, did was you correct. Have another question, what Mr. you did Mudge? was correct. You had it tested, but the test showed that we did not have mold or indoor air quality problems. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. But, okay. Mr. Draper, we did have various buckets around the That has nothing to, to do catch with mold and in the water. Even though it didn't have any mold, well, we're still catching rainwater. To, but, to be, but my point is, no, here, I have the floor, Mr. Mudge, and I asked Mr. Draper a question. He may answer. To be very clear, the issue at Davisville Middle School is not one where, when, if the roof will fail, at some point it will. The problem we have there is, as leaks arise, we patch them. At some point, it will not be possible to patch the leaks. At that point, mold will become an issue because we won't be able to stay ahead wow. of the moisture issues. Mrs. Avanzato. I just want to make a comment about health issues related to things like mold and like roofs and things like that. It's not an exact science. These tests are not foolproof. We're talking about children. They're much more vulnerable to these types of things than our adults, number one. We've had multiple complaints of people getting sick. It's not something you can just ignore and, and say that there's absolutely no concern. Mold, the f discovery of mold is often a very difficult thing. They may not see it until they rip the roof off. You know, my point is that during the removal of the roofs at Stony Lane and the other projects at the, at the uh, elementary schools, some of those tests came back negative, and those children were ill and had to be taken out in ambulances. I'm not suggesting that's, that's what's happening at Davisville Middle School. I Excuse me. Let me finish. I'm not suggesting that is what is happening at Davisville Middle School. I am saying there is no need to take that risk and that water should not be pouring into the building in various parts. You're not taking care of your asset, the building. It's been neglected for long enough. It's a responsibility of ours to take care of it. We don't have to make a hard case to prove that someone is ill from mold in order to be concerned about that. And just because we express that concern does not mean we need to be cross-examined that we have to prove it like we're in a court of law. Not necessary. That's not our job here. Well, why are we threatening the community with these Dr. false Jay accusations? Mr. Mudge, I'm not Dr. threatening Jay. anybody. I'm if telling you. them exactly what's going on. Okay. I haven't said that we you have know. 
major mold issues of these buildings. I say I, what I've said very cautiously is that we have a problem that can create major mold issues. If you're telling me, you know, I got kids in the school system. If you're telling me it's okay for my kids to go into a building that's leaking like a sieve on a regular basis, and that's okay I, because we did a mold test I've so never, far, never, we haven't had a problem. I've never okay. said that. Well, that's what you're implying. I am not okay? implying that. So we need I, the roof. So I've got. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're not acting like it. Yeah. So I'm trying to. So we. Dr. Ogie has the floor. Let's let. We him have speak. had complaints from parents. We have had grievances from teachers. You know, at a certain point, Mr. Mudge, you just got to say, listen, this is the right thing to do. Let's stop the all of this. The right thing to do is spend our money wisely and fix yeah. the problem in this building. That's what we should be doing, and we can get to that if we have a bond. If we don't have a bond, we've got to take care of the Davisville roof and all those other ADA issues first. And it'll take even longer to get to the issues in this building. Okay, I agree with you. My issues in this building question. are important. I'd like yeah. to get to them. But that's not on any of the agendas. Nobody's looked at it. I haven't anything recognized else. you, Mr. Mudge. I can't because we have the roof in front of us and we have these other issues in front of us. So, you know, it all leads to that, Mr. Mudge. Oh, it doesn't. Well. All right. You I say see somebody here for this. citizens' comments. I, you so say I'm going to... I, um, may, may I, I haven't finished. You said asbestos is dangerous. Yes, Did we test we to see if we have a OSHA or a problem Madam with asbestos? Chair, what is your order? Yes. What is your point of order? The meeting is getting out of control. I would suggest that members, anyone at this table, not address comments to one another, but address comments through the chair and raise your hands to be recognized as usual. Yes. Uh, thank you. I've, I've been trying to. And now, I've called on you many times, Mr. Rudge. How about ADA violations? Do we have violations of the, uh, the uh, uh, Disabilities Act? Do we have them? Yes or no? Point of order. And let Madam us get Chair. the, the let Mr. Draper answer. Let that. us get the uh, Governor's Commission on Disabilities to come down and look at that, because it's suggested in here if somebody puts in a complaint that we're going to have to run around and fix something immediately. And Governor that's incorrect. Our bond. Okay, Mr. Draper, you have the floor. I, I, I'm going to, you know, obviously this, this being my last official meeting, it's not that I'm going to have a dog in this fight down the road. But I will say this. I am very happy that the people of North Kingstown put confidence in me and paid me well over these past four-plus years to serve them. I would also say with the millions of dollars you have invested in the Davisville Middle School and your other facilities, this plan before you is what we've been talking about for many years. It's not just what's come up recently. It's what we've been talking about many years for asset preservation. While I understand Mr. Mudge's comments and his, his difference of opinion, we've had experts and capable professionals go through the buildings to a highly detailed degree in accordance with ride requirements for the Department of Ed requirements. This is the result of an exhaustive study that we've changed direction on it, rides direction, to just give them bare bones essentials. We resolved an Americans with Disabilities complaint at another school. I would not, I would be remiss if I told you, yeah, go ahead and roll the dice and see if you can get away with, with waiting on these. I also do not think it makes sense to file complaints against yourself for different items and then risk having to do them whether or not you have funding. This is an orderly process. If we have funding that becomes available, we'll be able to address these issues. Yes, but I, I, you know, I, I support that. Been recognized. Okay. I'll just say one more thing. Yes, Mr. Mudge, I recognize you for one more thing. I, I agree that some of these things and what time should have to be done, okay? It's a matter of a choice of where we spend the money. But when we say in here, ADA is a federal law for which we have no choice to comply, is incorrect. Thank you. Would, would anyone like to comment on, on that? Mr. Welch. I'll only say one, one more time for the audience in the audience only. All the people that were involved in pushing this program through, I, pushing is probably the wrong word. <laughs> right. In, in allowing this program to go through, all of the pr licensed professionals, et cetera, including Ride and the Regents, um, they all take a back seat to what Mr. Mudge feels. I'm sorry, you know, it's time to move on. Yeah. You have a, a uh, a citizen's comment. 
Mr. Blasbell, you have the floor. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Gregory Blasbell. I live at 70 Whitman Drive. Um, I just wanted to comment on um, some things I've heard this evening that I find puzzling, particularly from one particular member of the committee. Um, you know, your folks are tasked with protecting the health and safety of our students. You're tasked with making sure that our school buildings and facilities are kept up to all of the requirements that federal, state, and local laws and ordinances would require. Now, if I'm understanding you correctly, Mr. Mudge, you're suggesting that the only time that we should be dealing with issues such as fire code violations, ADA violations, uh, health and safety issues are if you are actually cited with a violation from an enforcement agency. No, absolutely not. Well, I, I don't want to get into a question absolutely. and answer. It's, I, it's my they're not violation. Comment. 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 If, so, if you don't Mr. Blasco gets to, to finish. I don't get much time to speak. Don't mischaracterize what I'm saying. Well, I, I could quote you. you. You asked what we should bring in the fire marshal to see if they will cite us for a violation. No. We should bring in OSHA to see if they'll cite us for a violation. I'm sorry if I misheard you. Maybe I did, but that's what I heard this evening. If it gets to the point where that has happened, you folks haven't done your job. That means that something's dreadfully wrong, that in a government agency has required you to do something. And Mr. Draper mentioned something that I was going to mention, which is at that point, you would be required to correct that violation instantaneously, whether you have the funding or not, even if it means pulling the funding from something that might be more important. Mm -hmm. I, for one, don't support operating our schools that way. And as a parent, I'd be very concerned if, as a committee, that was the way things were going on. Um, I, I mean, I have to say personally, I think that to miss an opportunity, as, as I think it's clear you oppose this bond, I don't think you'd say that's wrong, yeah, that's right. to have the state yeah. of Rhode Island contribute at least 30 percent of the cost for things that need to be done. Now, we can quibble about what needs to be done in what priority, but I don't think that there's anything that's posted in this bond that is truly a waste of money. The ADA exists for a reason. It's so that people with disabilities can have access to our schools. It's an important thing, and it's not something that this town or the school department can simply decide not to follow. The mandate's there to protect our students and students that need them, and I've seen parents come in here with problems with the playground telling very real stories of how their child is impacting by an unfortunate oversight on our town for not bringing a playground up to the level it should be. That's what we're talking about. These things affect real people. And whether it's a roof, whether it's ADA, it's money that needs to be spent. And as Dr. Ogier has said, having the bond finances would give us an opportunity to spend other funds in the capital improvement area on other things that need to be done. So I, for one, support it. And that's my Sorry, more than three minutes. Thank you for May your I time. Comment, Thank you. May I comment, please? May I comment? No. May I comment, please? This is the fact of the comments. matter is, Mr. Mudge, you've not been these recognized. These aren't this violations. Is comment. Okay. Mr. Mudge, you haven't been recognized. Mr. August. I, I thought I heard you say the same thing, Bill, that you needed OSHA or somebody else to come in. I, I'm just telling you what I heard. Should, you, they should come in and validate that we Mr. have a August violation or not. Yes, the the I agree with is that. Is that the the problems seem to have been studied ad infinitum. Numerous people with expertise in the area have looked at the issues. Maybe not everybody to everyone's satisfaction, but it certainly seems to me a case has been made that these changes have to be made. These alterations must be made. And, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Roger, I think one of the things that you pointed out at the PTO meeting was that if this bond issue passes, that for a homeowner with an assessed value of about $300,000, which is fairly typical, over the life of the bond, we're talking about $25 a year. On average, yes. On average for that homeowner and additional taxes. Now, I'm a senior citizen, as you can t see. That is a big burden if we have to deal with these issues. We cannot wait, as my predecessor citizen said, we can't wait until you get a violation and then you're told you must do this and it's going to cost us whatever and we don't have the money. But we don't have the violation is what I'm saying. That's Mr. all August I want validated. Mr. Now, August has the floor. The point is the violation has not been issued. You're absolutely correct. No, no, no. There is not a August violation. The floor. Why Mr. didn't the August fire marshal cite the floor? Potential exists for it a does violation. Not. It is not August a violation. And that's all I'm Mr. saying. August Let's validate that. 
I don't want I won't take any more. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, Mrs. Evans. I would ask that if we can't control the meeting, then we have we call someone to remove disorderly members. This is ridiculous. Oh sure, go ahead. If you think that I'm disorderly, Mr. I'm just trying Mudge, to spell it. You need to go by the money wisely. I'm asking you to please be considerate of others in this meeting. Make a motion. We move on. Second. Uh, I, with All those in favor, say aye. 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 With respect to All that, I have opposed? some. Another member of the audience. Oh, yes. Go ahead. I have some Sorry. correspondence. We have citizens' comment, so we can ha have. We have to hear the citizens' comments as it is a work session. Please state your name and where you live. Thank you. Um, Bob Jones, um, Saunders Town. Um, I, I've sent uh, the members and, and Dr. Oje an email already, so I just wanted to sort of uh, come in public and, and speak to the, uh, the points I made in my email to all of you. The district has a strategic plan. Uh, I took a chance to read it a while ago. And I guess one of my fundamental concerns I would, I would express to the members of the committee as, as sort of stewards of, of the town's resources is to what extent you're actually using the plan to inform your resource allocation decisions. Um, I saw there's three goals listed. There's a number of subordinate strategies uh, within the three goals. It, it seems to me during the discussion and some of the, the items that were put out that there was very little linkage in terms of some of the decisions that were made to how they actually impact achievement or progress towards their goals. Second, I would say I, I was heartily encouraged. I did go back at the 228 meeting uh, and listen to the brief on the kneecap scores, um, which I think relates to goal number one in the district strategic plan. But again, I would ask the members of the school committee uh, if they're satisfied with just that top level assessment. For example, is there a gender effect in kneecap scores? What is the effect in going to eighth grade to 11th grade from students who have come from outside the district, i.e. Jamestown, in the ninth grade? Is there a longitudinal difference? I know that the superintendent mentioned that, yes, some kids leave after eighth grade, they go to private schools. I would assume there's longitudinal data from students from fifth grade to eighth grade to 11th grade, all who have taken the test. Um, again, I would also encourage you, while proficiency, of course, is very important, um, especially with the ride standards, I would also encourage you to look at the, the students who are at level four and what happens to them by the time they reach 11th grade. It seems to me, based on the data, there's a great drop off, uh, especially in the female population of level four proficiency. Again, I think there's a lot of things in the data uh, that you need to dig beneath um, that I think would, would help uh, some of the members of the community to, to understand if you're making sufficient progress towards those goals. I, I'd like to finish by saying that I know um, the district's, uh, at least the high school's NEAS accreditation is coming up. Um, perhaps the superintendent or, or the committee members can talk about what the timeline is for that. Uh, having gone through a NEAS accreditation in another institution, I, I would say it's a, the self-study and other processes that go along with that is very informative to the community. I was somewhat disappointed in talking with what was an otherwise an excellent presentation here at the high school for the incoming freshmen that the focus seemed to be that the self-study was centered on current juniors and sophomores. When over a 10-year accreditation, if you think about the resourcing allocations and the budgets those will affect, it affects probably eight to 10 years worth of students. And again, I would highly encourage you to let the members of the community know what the timelines are, how members of the community can impact on the self-study and other, and other components of that. This is, a, after all, the accreditation for the high school um, very important for those of us who have children that will be in the high school over the next 10 years, um, that that accreditation, I think, informs the district's strategic planning and the subsequent resource allocation decisions that are made from that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, Dr. Jay. I, I want to thank Mr. Jones. I, I have an appointment, I believe, to meet with you very soon um, to talk about some of these issues, and I appreciate your comments. Um, you know, You've raised some issues that um, have, you know, uh, I'm, I'm interested in, in learning some more myself about those kinds of things. Um, I just want you to know um, on the NEASC item, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Kenworthy is at a NEASC visit this week. Um, I've been um, part of a NEASC accreditation process myself. Um, a lot of the people in the high school who are currently, you know, uh, going through this process have been through the process last time. So, 
you know, there is an awareness of, of what is going on with that and how to appropriately prepare for that and how to learn from that once, once you do so. So, you know, I think we're in pretty good shape as far as that's concerned. Um, but uh, I do appreciate your comments on strategic planning process. I look to uh, make this happen um, to revitalize our strategic plan in May, and I hope you'll be a part of that um, to, to help us. Um, there are a lot of, of issues that we look at uh, when we look at student data. And uh, you pointed up, you know, gender differences and things like that. Um, you know, we could probably do a better job at looking uh, at some of those issues like you mentioned, but uh, one thing that we've been very clear about um, when we uh, present data to the school committee is that we are particularly concerned about, you know, uh, kids who are not achieving well on our tests and what we're doing to help them to, to do better in the future. Um, we do track with our principals very closely, um, you know, those trends of students as they go up in the years, and we can show you data to that effect. Um, not all of that comes out at the school committee night when we make that brief presentation, but I can assure you that um, we're looking very closely at, at every element, and I'm very impressed when I go to schools and I see teachers working together and they use data boards, which is a presentation that we made last year, where teachers can tell you by the kid, you know, these are the kids that I need to be paying particular attention to because they're not over the bar on the particular expectation I have for them that's supposed to be, um, you know, coming together for them, you know, this quarter, and they're not there yet. So we need to do different things with those kids to get them there. There's that level of detail in looking at, you know, whether it's a boy or a girl or, or, or whatever, you know, we're worried about all kids, you know, reaching the bar. And so... You know, there's a lot going on that may not come out at, uh, you know, in a presentation to the school committee once a year on those scores, but I can assure you that uh, there's, there is a lot going on, and I'm looking forward to talking with you some more about it. Just to add something on that, just um, about three years ago, I sat on the um, school improvement team here at the high school, and one of the things that we specifically looked at were the gender differences between the scores of the high school students and how they were performing. And we had a specific group that um, was looking at the scores of boys um, because we were concerned the boys' scores were not as high as they should be. So I'm sure, like I said, I think that was about three years ago. So it would have been a little bit um, like right when you were coming on or before your time and definitely before Dr. Humbert's time. I'm not sure where that data has gone. Um, but, and I don't remember if it would have been kind of one of those things that kind of got a little bit lost in between our, our difference in principles, but it was something that our group put together a report. And one, one interesting note, and I'll just end on this, if you go out in the hallway and you look at the top 10 students of the class of 2012, they're all girls, which is kind of amazing. And, and I've, I've been seeing that trend in the last uh, 10 or 15 years as a high school administrator, that more and more of national honor societies are girls, more and more of top 10 are girls. Um, and, uh, you know, good for the girls, but we've got to be paying attention to the boys in that respect, too. And you pointed out an area where the girls are actually going backwards as they move from eighth grade to uh, into the high school. So, you know, there are those issues that we need to be looking at. Mrs. Avanzato. Just very briefly, yeah, strategic planning is, is one area where the public can really be involved. And so I would really encourage you to to stay involved in those meetings because um, when we did quite a bit of work on that when Dr. Thornton was here and um, the community involvement was great. I mean, the people came, they gave feedback, it was incorporated into the plan and any expertise you can bring to, to help out would be welcome. Citizens' comments. Go ahead, sir. Good evening. My name is Wayne McCarthy. I live at uh, 1266 Old Baptist Road. And um, just doing a, a little quick calculating here of my tax bill, bill and the 4% that looks like will be coming this year. Um, you're talking about the, Mr. August mentioned that the uh, bond would only cost, what, $32 a year or $25 was that he had mentioned to the uh, average taxpayer. But you forget we're getting a 4% increase in tax here on property tax in town. So my, I figured it out, uh, for me anyways, it's $37 a month more taxes going to the town in addition to the bond. And it might not sound a lot like a lot for you folks, but my wife and I both live on a fixed income. 
and we don't get pay raises every year. And it affects people with lower incomes and don't have uh, the ability to be able to uh, make up the difference in lost and, and expenses and taxes and everything else is coming. And this is just local tax. We all know where the governor is going with his tax increases. So something keep uh, in mind, it impacts everybody. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Um, just one clarification that the budget that the town manager did propose last night, while he did propose to the town council um, a 4% increase for the schools, he did not propose a 4% um, levy increase for the rest of the town. Um, he proposed a 3.51 levy increase for the rest of the town. For overall, yes. So I was at the meeting last night um, for the, the presentation and picked up a, a pamphlet. Are there other citizens' comments? All right. Moving on, Dr. J, non-renewal. Uh, the next item is uh, non-renewal of the athletic director's contract. I, I notice Mr. Marcello is here tonight. Uh, I do want to just say uh, how much I appreciate the work that he has done over the last few years. He came in at a pretty contentious time about the athletic department, and he did an excellent job of particularly, you know, looking at our books and, and making sure that everything was done um, by the book in that regard, and, and I really appreciate that. I just want people to know that this has nothing to do with uh, Mr. Marcello's uh, job performance. I think if you were here for our budget um, deliberations, you will know that we are looking to reorganize that position um, in order as a way to save some money. Um, we are aware of other school districts that do this with uh, teachers who um, may be um, gaining some kind of a stipend and, and use of some of their time where they wouldn't teach a full day. They might teach three-fifths of a day and get some stipend. Um, and it would actually be a team of four different people um, doing things that way to uh, oversee this uh, very important work. And uh, we feel with a savings of about $50,000 doing it that way that uh, this is something that we need to explore. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it does affect Mr. Marcello. Um, but um, I just want to say that I, I do appreciate the work that you have done. Dr. Ajay, are you looking for a vote on this tonight, or are you? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Dr. Ajay yeah. has um, put this out. I'm looking if there is a motion on the floor and then discussion. You're looking like you have a question, Mr. Barskar. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I understand what we're. What we would we have previously voted for the green budget, and within the green budget, part of approving that budget was that we would reorganize the athletic department in order to then um, have our athletic director be part time. So, as a result of that um, that approval of the green budget, it would mean that we would not be renewing a full time athletic director contract. Well, that part I understand. I just mean. The, the so we have to then take a vote that, yes, we are not renewing a full-time athletic director contract. And so that is what I'm looking for is basically I'm looking for a verification that you are approving the green budget, and so therefore you're not going to renew the athletic director's um, full-time contract. And you want, you want a motion to discuss it? I want to, yes, I want a motion to discuss it in a second, and then we discuss it before we take the vote. Then I move to, I, I'm making a motion to discuss it. You're making a motion to non-renew the athletic Correct. director's contract. Okay. So now it is open for discussion. Second. Second. I second. second it. Second. Mrs. did. Mrs. Alvanzato. Yeah, I did it reluctantly. Um, and you can tell no one up here wants to, <laughs> wants to do it. You couldn't get a, anyone to raise their hand to make the motion. And this is where the tough part of this job comes in, because it's one thing to have a sheet in front of you with everything green, and, you know, we voted on that. And then it's a whole other thing when it's confronting you directly, and it's, it's nothing that any of us relish or want to do. And I personally want to thank Mr. Marcello, because he stepped in and he 
got a department that that had some issues, had some problems, particularly in the financial area, and he addressed those issues. And he was there for the kids, and he was there with the teams, and I've been told by many, many people about the hours he put in, the time he put in, and the dedication he had. So to the teams and the kids, I just wanted to thank him for that. Mr. Welch. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> I was reluctant to, to make a, make the motion because I, I really don't understand why we need the motion. First of all, um, we've already approved a, a reduction in the uh, preliminary budget request by the superintendent that would have eliminated the job. Second of all, um, notice on the contract, non-renewal, I'm sure there's a notice uh, clause in the contract for non-renewal, and, and, and that is a decision of the superintendent. So I'm, I really don't understand why there needs to be a motion. Um, and that's got nothing to do with um, the performance that uh, Mr. Marcello um, has done. And I'll, I'll uh, go along with what Mrs. Afizano said. It certainly was a time of flux and change when Mr. Marcello came in, a very popular individual. Uh, left and he had to pick up the pieces after him. So I would say um, kudos uh, to Mr. Marcello and this is an unfortunate thing that has to happen but I'm not even sure that it has to happen at this point in time because as far as I'm concerned not until we know exactly what we're up against and I don't think we know that yet as it relates to the to the budget um, is anything final. I think it's all up in the air quite frankly. So. Uh, you know, I will, I will vote against this motion. Thanks, Ms. Carroll. Mr. Welch, in, in an abundance of caution, yep. because um, Mr. Marcello has a contract, mm -hmm. um, we had a discussion and we are giving the courtesy of a notice to state that his contract is not being renewed. So that's why we put it on the agenda for a non-renewal um, of his contract. Basically, he's given notice He's given an opportunity to speak on his behalf if he would like, and then the committee is, is taking the action, and that's why it's on the agenda. Okay, but it does not necessarily have to be final. Hmm. Well, it definitely doesn't have to be final tonight. Do <laughs> we have an obligation final. to take this notice before the end of March? No. no. Okay. No. That's, that, that's, what, that's what concerns me. I'm sure there's a notice clause in his contract, and I, I just don't know why we're here. Yeah, I. Mr. Mike. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, Ms. Carroll. Did you have something? No, no. You had, you had, you gave him a contract. Yep. And what we do is we treat all of our um, administrators. He's a quasi administrator, although it's not clear that he has the same rights as the the, the principals um, under the statute. But we wanted to be clear and to be give notice that this this potentially would be happening. That's why it's on the agenda. Mr. Mudge. I, uh, too, uh, with Mr. Welsh, I'm concerned about this. What, what's the action I am going to vote and tail here? If we, if we say vote yes, it's over. He's gone. You know, it's not a little asterisk over here and say, well, you know, da -da -da, if this happens or that happens, okay, uh, mm. we're going to, you know, make a decision on this uh, now, later, or the budget. I mean, this is a, a firm action we're making. There's no, there's no, uh, uh, waiver or option once we approve this. But I, I'm, I'm against this at this time for a couple of reasons. And I brought this up before, and I'm aware that they, we do uh, have uh, some cases that, in, uh, for example, the war school system where we have part time, we have teachers that, you know, we get some reduced the class time to, you know, handle these things. But I think it's kind of premature now because there may be a couple other ways to handle this, in which uh, you could uh, be part of, and, and until we have a plan to replace the current full-time position, you know, I'm going to be against this proposal until I know what that position is, and that that position, the way it's going to be filled, is going to, uh, you know, meet the requirements that we have to run our athletic department, and it could it could uh, take a different course of action and possibly. Uh, uh, be uh, uh, issued with a, a lesser uh, uh, amount of money in terms of the contract itself. Quite frankly, you know, I believe, although I appreciate the athletic director's uh, uh, 
uh, contributions to the town that, you know, we're paying in the neighborhood of probably $100,000 with benefits and everything else, and I think that's quite quite a bit to be paying. And, and maybe one thing is to restructure something that that we, uh, we, we get this job done at a lower cost. But there, there are some options, and until we put those on the table, I'm reluctant to, to vote against the non-renewal of this uh, uh, contract. And, and also, as Mr. Welsh has said, and which now raises uh, my concern a little bit more is, is what is the status of your contract? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm concerned about that, and uh, I think we should postpone this thing at best until we know exactly what the status of the contract is, and not tonight, and uh, 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 look at what this, um, this, this motion and the vote would mean if we actually take the vote. Thank you. May I speak to this? Yes, and then uh, Mr. Busker. Uh, you know, I just want to point out, uh, and I'm not looking to, you know, uh, be in any conflict with Mr. Marcello. I've already made my comments to that effect. Um, this is a, uh, an issue that, um, you know, I know Dr. Kenworthy has worked on a great deal. Uh, we've done some research. You know, this, this very committee um, has often asked for me to look into ways to, uh, cons you know, consolidate, if that's the right word, to cut costs, to cut administrative costs. Um, and we, we did a great deal of work this uh, winter to go through our budget as closely as possible and find ways to save money. Um, I am confident, uh, you know, barring uh, that someone is going to win the lottery and donate a heck of a lot of money to this district, that we're going to need to make these kinds of cuts to, make a, to get to our budget. Um, I would prefer to give Mr. Marcello due notice so that he has time to plan and so that we have time to plan for, you know, the next... Uh, year starting July 1st when, you know, an athletic director starts down the road. Um, e even though, you know, anything could happen, um, I don't see this as an issue where um, I am looking to um, take another course of action or to study it further. We've studied it a great deal. Uh, we find that other districts are doing things this way and it's working for them. We'd like to try it and we could save $50,000 roughly in the process. So I would be advocating for this whether or not we have troubles. We just heard from a gentleman, very well spoken, about how, you know, don't we pay enough in taxes already? I'm about to make a proposal to you for consolidation of, of administrative level positions doing the same kinds of things to save another $215,000. This is something you have already approved. Thank you. This is just a matter of a formality at this point to say we're making it official and, and we're going to move on. Now, if something should occur where all of a sudden we get hundreds of thousands of dollars that I don't know about and we can do something differently, I'd be open to having someone bring it on the floor to reverse this. But I don't see that happening. And like I said, even if we got a lot of money, this is still a good move. You know, and that, again, that is nothing against Mr. Marcello or anything like that. So, you know, I just would hope that you could support this right now. If, if you wish, we will bring this back at a later date, but we're just, you know, in my opinion, um, you know, going to go through the same conversation again um, and, you know, uh, with the efficiency of time and all of that, I, I just think it's the right thing to do right now. It is well thought out. It's something we've talked about before on the stage. I, I think we're ready to go. Mr. Busgarden. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Wells, thank you very much because you were able to voice my confusion a lot better than I was, obviously. That, that was one of my, one of my questions. Uh, it, it seems to me that we already, we already approved this, uh, the green budget, the 4% local support tax increase. Am I correct? Yes. And um, just last evening, uh, Mr. Embry um, recommended that we receive a 4% increase. Now, chances are, I mean, if, if, everything, if everything falls our way, we'll get that 4%. But let's be real about it. We're probably not going to get it. We haven't got it in the past. Uh, I, I can't see them giving us an entire 4%. With that in mind, this was already approved. This was in the green. And now, Mr. Mudge, you want to start manipulating and massaging this thing around to eliminate this. Um, no. Y yes, you just did. Now, let me speak. You said there may be other ways to basically skin this cat, to save this position and find the money elsewhere. When you approved this green budget, 
when we voted on it how many weeks ago? First of all, I didn't approve. Let me finish. Don't say it's, 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 it's time. It, it was approved by the school by, by the school committee. Right. We have to stop pussyfooting around here and get down to business. And I agree with with um, Dr. OJ that. Well, Mr. Marcello may have done a very good job. I don't know because I have not been on Brown here long enough. I will take his word for it. He's his employee. This is not a personal thing. This is just trying to meet the budget that's going to be before us. So for us to go back and try to reinvent the wheel again is going to do nothing but waste time. Uh, Mr. Welch? Yeah, I just want to clarify something. I'm not... I'm not arguing with the superintendent's plan. The only thing I said, I don't understand why we're voting on something that we've already voted on with a contract that has a notice clause in it. That was my only question. I'll say something, Mr. Mudge, and then I'll let you say something. Um, I, I will say, you know, I come to a number of the athletic events, and I see Mr. Marcello here at just about all of them that I've come to. So I know that he's worked hard at this. But... Our, this is the green budget that, as we've said too many times, it is the best-case scenario. And so we know we're probably going to have to cut more. And I would rather give someone ample notice and have to then start to be looking around as to how are we going to reorganize things for next year if we're only going to do it part-time, because that will be a vast difference in how our athletics are structured. It's, it'll be a struggle for that group, because Mr. Marcello puts more than 40 hours in here at North Kingstown, so it will be very difficult for somebody to step in. So if that's the way we're going to go, it's going to have to be something that's done sooner rather than later, because we have... Um, captain's practices that start in the summer. Then um, we have um, teams during August that start their tryouts. So this isn't something that we can continue to put off if we're going to, even if we're just going to affirm our vote. Mr. Mudge. Uh, first of all, I didn't vote for the budget that went to the council, we know. And one of the reasons I didn't vote for that was uh, I believe we didn't have sufficient information uh, concerning the budget that we were, were following to the council. And this, this is one of these issues right here. In principle, I, I, I support Dr. Noje in terms of we have to re reduce the uh, expenditures for this, quote, function, if you may. Uh, that doesn't mean it's uh, a less uh, uh, of a contribution or not. But my point was, uh, I'm concerned on how we're going to fill his shoes. I, I haven't seen a plan whether 10 people are going to do the job or one person is going to do the job, or maybe we'll just contract out for a $50,000. Somebody see if somebody wanted a retired teacher or somebody else would like to take the job for $50,000 or something like that. That was my point, okay? So, and, and that's why I, I raised that question, because I think before we – you know, uh, eliminate the position, we ought to know how we're going to fill it and if we're making the right decision. And I don't think we've really addressed that. Okay? And I haven't seen the plan. Maybe I, I, maybe we should look at the plan and see if we're all happy with how we're going to replace Mr. Marcello's position with, uh, with the, uh, in whatever fashion it's going to be. And I haven't seen that. When I proposed the plan, it was in your packet. Yes, this has been what something that Dr. Ms. Dr. Jay has put out this information. The night that and you his door the is open, and he described as to how this would be reorganized. So this isn't something that is new that we don't know about. It is something that has been covered. But how, Lorraine, at this time, are we ready to Jim, take a roll call vote? Could somebody tell me what the plan to replace him is? Kimberly Page. How are we going to do it? Yes. Richard Welsh. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. John Biscardin. Yes. William Mudge. No. Motion passes four to one. Thank you. <coughs> Superintendent um, consoli er, consolidation proposal. Yes, thank you. Um, as as many of you know, you know, for ever since I've uh, begun, as a matter of fact, the very first meeting I went to as uh, interim superintendent was a consolidation committee meeting. It was uh, a real pleasure. I can tell you that. Um, the um, and, and I want to talk about 
you know, some ideas that have been, you know, uh, on my mind. Um, there's been a lot of ongoing back and forth between myself and, and uh, uh, members of this committee, members of the town council about, you know, some ideas in terms of uh, consolidation proposals for such areas as finance, um, information technology, uh, buildings, and grounds. And tonight I am proposing to you um, some options um, that I hope you will approve. And once you do, I will take those options to the town council um, and ask for their approval as well. And what I'm looking to do in total is to save North Kingstown taxpayers 200 and $15,000, to be exact, $215,956 um, in costs that go to um, our, the fact that the town and the school department both have a finance director. The town and the school department both have an information technology, uh, uh, we call a manager, um, and at the town they call him a director, basically the same functions. Um, and we both have someone uh, on our books at least that oversees uh, buildings and grounds. At this point right now, uh, with Mr. Draper leaving, um, we are, um, what remains is uh, Ms. Sunderland at the town. We also have just learned last night that Mr. Albuquerque, the director of IT at the town, is taking another job. Uh, Rich Booth is our inf IT manager. And right now, uh, John Dittman is a facilities foreman um, at, uh, for the town and we had uh, Louis Cahoon doing his uh, job. And what I am proposing to you is that we um, consolidate those leadership positions. You know, we have talked uh, at, at nauseum at consolidation committee meetings about different ways of doing this, and really, you know, we've had an e-alert study, $40,000, and even with that study, uh, a plan came out, but not much of a detailed plan. Um, that plan as far as we got was with one of these areas with information technology and the plan basically states to have the town oversee the infrastructure, not sure exactly what that means, of the uh, school department and to worry about all of the other details later. Um, to me, there's a lot of uncertainty there. In past uh, few weeks, um, as soon as I heard of Mr. Draper leaving, I called um, the town manager, Mr. Embry, and asked that I meet with him to discuss and specifically uh, buildings and grounds. As you may know, Mr. Draper oversees our finance, but he also right now oversees buildings and grounds because Mr. Cahoon no longer works with us and we haven't filled that vacancy yet. So um, I, was, I, I am and we are pursuing a finance director, um, but I am very interested in at least starting uh, the ball rolling with the sharing of a, a buildings and grounds um, person that would oversee both the town and school functionality and save us a salary, save us a set of benefits, and come up with a, a lot of savings to this district. Um, when uh, Mr. Embry came to that meeting, um, we also talked about finance. Um, I told him and I followed up with an email that there are a couple of things that I feel are kind of non-negotiable in this, and that is because they are law. It is the, the law that uh, the school department would have a finance director that is accountable to the superintendent and the school committee. Uh, and that cannot be something that is handled by uh, the town, particularly if that person is answerable only to, say, the town manager. It has nothing to do with North Kingstown or North Kingstown politics or anything like that. That is state law. So that was something I, I was worried about. And in past sessions about consolidation, I have mentioned to the town at, at, at our, at our uh, meeting, in fact, where we had a, a meeting about IT and we had eLERT uh, reporting to us. I said, you know, I am, I'm all for consolidation, but consolidation takes many different uh, forms. And what I would like to see are some detailed proposals. And the thing that concerns me most is the loss of decision-making power for things that are, uh, by law, um, part of my job and part of the responsibilities of this committee. Uh, for instance, it is this committee that is that has the job of overseeing and maintaining the structures of our schools. It is not the town. The town may build a school, but maintaining a school is the job of a superintendent and, and a school committee to oversee that. That is our role. So we need to have that authority to do that. So we could consolidate, we can find ways to save money, but that's one thing that has to stay put. The ability of, of the 
superintendent and the school committee to oversee those kinds of operations and to make sure they're done right. Uh, for finance, same thing. We uh, obviously, we've been talking a lot about tonight about a budget. We oversee a budget. It is a major part of our responsibilities, probably the biggest piece of our responsibility. We spend more time talking about that than anything else. Uh, to simply take all of our decision-making authority away and hand it over to the town on something like that, I don't think anyone's suggesting that, but what I, w I meant to do with the town is to be clear that that would not be part of the equation of, what, of anything that I would propose. And again, I haven't seen any other proposal from anyone else on any committee. Um, and so the same thing with information technology. We talked about this probably more than anything else over the year with the eLERT study. And as I've stated on several occasions, I am very happy with the work that Mr. Booth is doing. Uh, and I also feel that it's important for me as superintendent and for this committee to have decision-making authority over the work that our IT department does. It is so I incredibly intertwined with everything we do that has to do with teaching and learning that to just hand that off to, to another entity that doesn't understand those issues as well is, in my opinion, reckless. And, and even if it could save us money, I, I would not advocate for it. So this is what I am advocating for. I'm advocating for the, the positions of finance, information, and buildings, and I'm going to talk about grounds separately, that for those three areas that we look to consolidate the leadership of those positions, that we look to hire one person to do those roles that we share, um, proportionately 65 percent for the school department and 35 percent for the town. And the reason I come up with those numbers is that if you look at the, the entire town budget of $97,861, the school budget of $63,759,000 is exactly 65% of that budget. So we have 65% of the responsibilities to, of things to oversee in terms of finance, information technology, and buildings. In the case of information, information technology, uh, the school department has five staff. The town has three. The school department uh, oversees 1,200 computers in this district and many, many uh, forms of functionality, including a major information management system and communications with RIDE and other government agencies. Uh, not to say that there aren't major uh, functionalities from the town as well, but we are a significantly bigger operation. Uh, for, for buildings, uh, same kind of thing. There, there's probably, uh, you know, and I, I don't know all the details on this. I've asked Mr. Embry for it a couple of weeks ago when we met. Haven't gotten the details back, but my understanding is that there is more property and buildings to be overseen from the schools than there are for uh, the town side. So um, what I am proposing is that instead of two positions, that we take the average of the salaries of the two people. So I'll, I'll use finance, for instance. Right now, uh, Mr. Uh, Draper's uh, pay currently comes in at about $103,000 and Ms. Sunderland's comes in at $80,000. I'm proposing to take the average of those two salaries and give this new position 125% of that because now they're doing two jobs instead of one. So the new salary would come in at about $115,000 with one set of benefits instead of two, which would be a total to cost to the taxpayers of $139,338 and a total savings over what we're currently doing of $83,602. That person, because there's 65 percent for the school district and 35 percent for the town, would work approximately three days a week for school department uh, issues and two days a week for town issues. There may be a difference in certain weeks where the traffic is heavy and, and different things need to occur. Uh, for the town or for the school, and I, it will be my responsibility with Mr. Embry to make sure that that person is not pulled too thin because we're both demanding so much of that person's time. For instance, uh, night meetings at a week like this uh, probably be important for that person to be at the town council meeting on Monday and the school committee on Tuesday. To ask that person to do other night meetings in a particular week might be asking too much, so we'd have to be careful about the use of that person's time. Uh, same thing for information technology. We would oversee 65 percent of it. This person would oversee the staff of the town and the staff of the school department uh, separately and uh, make sure that all of the work gets done in both of those areas. Uh, we would pay, the, t the school committee um, would pay for, uh, a school department would pay 65 percent of the person's salary, the town 35 percent of the person's salary. Um, the savings 
for those two uh, jobs that now become one would be savings to the taxpayer $72,045. For buildings, um, we would do essentially the same thing, take the two positions, average them, give this new person, because they have a lot more responsibility, 125% uh, well, of, of that average, um, one set of benefits instead of two. The total there would be about $100,000 for this person at a savings of $60,309. In total, those three positions consolidated would make up $215,956 in all. Uh, I have just laid out the details to this proposal. Now, their responsibilities would be similar to what we have now, that uh, this person would, for finance, for instance, would report 65% to the people on this stage, to me as superintendent and to this school committee, and 35% of the time would, fun would report to them, to the town. Now, if, uh, because we are 65% and they are 35%, I would insist that the school department have the responsibility of hiring the person, you know, overseeing the hiring process and making the decision as to who gets hired. But that both entities have the ability to fire their percentage of the person. So take the case of Mr. Booth, for instance. If, the, if Mr. Booth were chosen to, to do this for information technology, and after six months or so, the town says, you know what, we don't like what we're seeing here, we don't like uh, the product that we're getting, we don't like this arrangement, they can pull out at any time and go back to the way things were. We've tried it, uh, we, you know, no hard feelings, and things would work out just fine. As far as the school committee is concerned, 65% of that newly created salary comes out to roughly the same amount that we're spending for Mr. Booth right now. So he would go back to his present position with us, which we are happy with, and, and no harm done. We've tried something. We wanted to see if it worked. If, if, uh, if it didn't work with the town, we'll go back to the way things are, and perhaps we'll try something different down the road. But we've tried something. Same thing with facilities, same thing with buildings. The buildings piece, I would, I would like to do that uh, more of a 50-50 decision in terms of I think it will be a little bit easier. I think there is some, some evidence out there that our buildings people currently work together pretty well, and I think it would be pretty easy to uh, come to a mutual decision on who could oversee that more than the other areas. As far as grounds is concerned, I have no problem with the town overseeing um, the grounds and that we would, we would go directly with, um, I think it's uh, Phil Bergeron right now who oversees grounds for the district and, and basically as an outsourcing option, um, pay Mr. Bergeron um, and the town for their services to oversee our staff and the um, grounds work that they do in this district. Now, once that's phase one. That's year one savings of two, roughly $216,000. After a year that we have these arrangements in place, now we have three people who are overseeing staffs from each department. Those staffs are not necessarily intertwined yet. Okay, they're still working for their own entities, so there's no contract issues going on. There's no, uh, you know, these IT people are working for the school department, but they're really supposed to be working for the town, those kinds of issues. They keep doing their own work. But after a year or so, those three people that we put in place to oversee these departments will come back to us and talk to us about the experience and, and make suggestions for further consolidation. Then we go into phase two. We can, and now we have someone who is informed, who has worked in the, and has experience for a year of overseeing a whole year's worth of, you know, budgets and a whole year's worth of, of issues that come up for those departments and can make further issues about areas such as the staff in both of those departments suddenly becoming consolidated. For the IT, we could look at things like, you know, maybe we could share some of those servers and those switches and phones and all those kinds of things that we do. And now I have someone who is well-informed and has one-year experience knowing all the key players, knowing all the key components from each of these areas, and can make a well-informed presentation to us. Not an outside agency that comes in to study us, not a group of well-meaning people in a consolidation committee room. It's someone who is in the job and knows this work very well. And, and if they're there for a year, it means that both entities like this person in the job 
and are happy with that person's performance. So that, that's an endorsement right there, that they stayed in that position for a year. Um, so that is my proposal. Um, I hope you will endorse this tonight. Um, I just, before I, I, I move on to, you know, giving this to the committee, you know, some of the, I, I've had a lot of email interaction recently with members of the town council, and, and, you know, they have written to me, and I think they have felt that I have somehow tried to block consolidation efforts because I put out what I've called non-negotiables about things like uh, the importance of oversight for these particular roles, and I, and I stick to that. But, you know, I, I want to I make one thing clear. They have come to me and said things like that we have perilous financial conditions and cost saving, you know, and we need to, to you know, reconsider and, and do something to attack these, these issues. Um, Chairwoman Dolan, for instance, says any efforts we can make to at least explore ways to examine whether some structural changes are feasible can only help the public understand that we are doing all our best to provide excellent services both at the town and school level with the least painful increase in the tax base. And says that, you know, uh, people in this town, um, as someone just came up and said, do not, you know, appreciate a 4% overall increase. That, that's a hard thing to do. Even though I advocate for it because I feel it's needed at this point, I'm a taxpayer in this town too, and I don't want my taxes to go up 4%. I understand, sir, what you are saying. And so we need to explore these options. Now, this is not something easy for me to do. I would like to have full-time people as we have now because I think it's working. But I'm willing to try this out under the conditions that I presented um, in order to save this year $215,000 or $216,000 and likely more money as we move down the road. And I think this is doing it in a responsible way. Um, and and I, would, I would like to put this out to the, to the group for your consideration tonight. And I'd also like to say that if, you know, we do approve this tonight and we bring this to the town council and the town council weighs it, you know, and, and would like to talk with me about it, I am more than happy to invite, and I have done this already, I've invited people into my office and I've asked, please, come with detailed proposals. We have done too much of blaming the other side for not wanting to go down this road and finding excuses and blaming the other one for being a blocker on this. I am not a blocker. I have put out a, a detailed proposal that I have shown can save us $215,000. That can go a long way. That can help us at budget season. And I know that is a major concern for the town council right now. They are looking for these money-saving moves. I hope the school committee will support me on this, and I hope the town council will as well. Thank you. All right, so here's what I propose to do is, um, since as I know this is something that can be very, um, have a lot of questions that people want to uh, make comments on and that sort of thing, why don't we um, go down the table? Uh, I'll give each committee member about five minutes that you can ask your questions, you can speak, and then we will go to the next committee member. Um, at, that t uh, at the end of, of each committee member's time, if we feel as a consensus that we need to, to give each other another round, we can make it a shorter period of time. If we feel as if, no, we don't need another round, that we're ready, um, we can talk at that time if we want to take a vote or what we want to do. So um, is that agreeable to people? Yes, Mr. Welch? I just wanted to make a motion. Okay. To approve the superintendent's proposal. I'll second that motion. All right. So there's a motion on the table, and now we'll be for discussion. Mr. Mudge, I'm going to start with you. Uh, would you start with somebody else, please? I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Thank you. All right. So who would like to start? Mrs. Avanzato, go ahead. Okay. I, I'm not going to probably need a full five minutes, but maybe come back to me after I hear what some of the other members say. Um, first of all, I just want to recognize um, Dr. Auger for the amount of effort and thought and his willingness to put together something like this with detail, which isn't just, you know, talking the talk but walking the walk, with a concrete plan um, so we have something that we can actually work with because, you know, both of these bodies, this body and the town council, had a consensus vote on consolidating where it made sense on the IT report. But it was such a general thing. I mean, it really doesn't move the ball down the road. So I feel like this is a real step in the right direction. And there may be kinks. There may be things that need to be talked over. And as you said, I think this would be the beginning of the process, and there would be a discussion, obviously, with the town council. 
as to their input. Um, the idea of proportionality, I think, makes sense to me. I mean, I think this is a huge department. We have a lot of employees. We have a lot of buildings. It's just massive. So also, the other aspect of that is the legal aspect. The way the structure of the law in Rhode Island, we didn't create the law. We just have to abide by it right now while it's the way it's written. The way it's written now is the school committee has many different obligations under the law. It's very separate from the town. It's not like we're just an average department of the town. Um, even the charter reflects that other departments of the town are governed all in the same way, but the school department has our own statutory authority and obligations separate and apart from other departments of the town, such as I believe we have an obligation to have our finance director have a certification, which is one of the reasons why we couldn't simply just consolidate under the town's finance director right now as as suggested by the town because we our person needs to have a certification um, given that we're in the process of of hiring someone for that position you know I would suggest that it be somewhat of a joint venture obviously the school department is doing the hiring but perhaps with cooperation with one person with a member of the council or the manager um, and again, it's going to take a long time to figure all the different details out, but I just want to commend you for coming forward with it. I think we should, I'm definitely going to vote yes for it. I think that there may be kinks, there may be further discussion, but if we don't just move forward and with a concrete proposal like this, with the dollars on the table that make sense, that aren't just hypothetical, then I think we're not um, acting. So that's where I am right now. I'm going to let someone else talk. Mr. Welch, would you like to speak next? Sure. <clears throat> Over the years, I've been a proponent of consolidation um, in, in many areas, um, and, and it's, it's going to be difficult. I think one of our neighbors, um, East Greenwich, uh, consolidated uh, a short while ago, and I think that, um, quite frankly, uh, before we step into that, uh, that mire, uh, of concern, uh, we need to take a hard look at uh, their successes and possible uh, failures in that area. As I understand, there are some some problems in East Greenwich with their consolidation efforts. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't succeed where others have not, but we should look at the lessons that they've learned and make sure that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, I think there are many, many opportunities um, for us to consolidate. We had talked about at one time the, uh, the school department doing the janitorial work for the town side. Um, I've always been a proponent of the town doing the grounds, outside grounds work. Um, they have people that are doing that work all over town. Um, and possibly maybe we should, the, both the town and the school should be looking to, uh, to outsource uh, grounds maintenance uh, altogether. Uh, my position is that <coughs> anything that's non-education needs to be looked at very seriously towards uh, outsourcing because I don't think that we can at, at this juncture um, be um, efficient in our uh, uh, the way we have uh, uh, fashioned, not we but the people before us have fashioned um, the situation. We have a, uh, a situation that we, have, we, we can't live with any longer. The benefits are too expensive. Um, the wages are, are higher than, than the private sector. And the taxpayers can no longer f um, and, and are unwilling to um, pay uh, increases in their taxes. And, and I happen to agree with them. Um, I want to protect the, the school education program, but non-education things, um, you know, we, we, we just got to make the hard decisions and say that um, um, they're, they're the, the most susceptible items um, for change. And, uh, and if we don't do those things, then, then we're making a mistake for the community, quite frankly. Thank you. Mr. Busgarden. Thank you. <clears throat> First, I, um, Mr. Draper and Dr. Auger, this is really good work. I mean, I, I, when we spoke early in the week, I was um, 
really surprised. I mean, because it came together very quickly, and it's um, and I think it's more than just window dressing. And this is not a um, this is not a, a, a slight towards this. I was just um, I'm curious as to if we ever um, looked at outsourcing the grounds other than through the town. I mean, have we taken uh, RFPs for private contractors to, you know, maintain yeah, the grass? I, I think um, to get started, I, I feel, you know, with all the other projects that were taken on with this, that I, I would feel most comfortable with starting with the town. But if we find that, you know, um, we want to explore other people to outsource, I, I, don't, I don't see why we would hold back on that, you know particularly if we have any issues with the pricing that we're getting from the town or, or the quality of the service. So I, I don't think that would be an issue, but, you know, I think it's worth exploring, sure. Yeah, the, reason I, the reason I bring it up is because whether it's our folks or the town, it's still, um, there's still wages and benefits and it's tax dollars. Hmm. Um, whereas if we outsourced it, you, you would only be paying and you wouldn't be responsible for the benefits because obviously they're not our employees. But I think this is a great first step. I'm real happy uh, to see that we've uh, we've stepped up when others have failed. Thank you, Mr. Budge. <clears throat> well, I guess I'm the lone wolf again. I have here what I'm going to submit as correspondence because it's on this topic. It was a meeting at the. Uh, at risk held a meeting this week, and uh, it was on Saturday. And it was attended by Winsockets of Mayor Fontaine, Cranston's of Mayor Fung, Gary Sass, our own representative, Earhart, and by uh, Judge uh, Flanders, who's the, uh, uh, what do you call him for, uh, Central Falls, the receiver for Central Falls. And this individual was there at the meeting. And he laments that there were, you know, more, not more folks at the meeting uh, in terms of, and also people from North Kingstown. What he says here, here it is apparently uh, a complete meeting uh, led by Flanders. We've got a, a clip here that we ought to look at. It's, uh, there were questions that came up. And basically what it says here, of course, there is something lost by not being there in person, but well done video of the discussion presentation is available, recommended for full viewing by anyone who touches the financial systems which comprise North Kingstown's fiscal survival. And basically what we're saying is, this letter is saying is, we really haven't looked at this very thoroughly. So I'd like to pass that in for the record, please. Now, specifically, I'd like to make two comments, and this is on, on Avanzano uh, related to, about this being a specific plan and the fact that uh, apparently uh, the superintendent as well said that the consolidation committee uh, did not give a specific plan on the IT report. In fact, it did, and it was much more thorough than this. Also, with respect to due respect, the financial manager of the town in every district in the state of Rhode Island is responsible to the local authority, that being the town council. So if you think for one minute that, that, that we, we, we are going to hire <laughs> the town council's financial director for the town of North Kingstown, it's ludicrous. And this has not been well thought out at all. Certification. Certification for the position of the school's financial director could be, uh, is not, is required. But anyone with any paper credentials can get a two-year uh, extension, a two-year uh, approval to, uh, to, to uh, obtain and, and be in this position, I think, that, uh, Mr. Traper, you were given uh, an interim accreditation when you took this job, okay? So certification is off the table in terms of as an issue here. <clears throat> Look at this plan. What this plan suggests is we're going to have one person do a two-person job 
I guess within eight hours a day. What this says is that we're going to share this job on a, a 30, a 65-30 basis. So what this says is the town's, the finance director's position is going to work three days for the town, uh, for the school department, and two days for the town. What this suggests is the finance director for the town of North Kingstown is sitting doing nothing for three days. Not a thing. That she can just get up and leave and have nothing to do while she, today. I mean, she can just, she's just, where she's wasting time. She's ineffective. You know, she's sitting there. Feet on the table for three days, and she can just come over here, okay, and uh, do our job while sitting there doing nothing. Conversely, same thing for IT, okay? We can replace these people, which means the other person isn't, isn't doing a thing. This is I, – I wonder if we had any science or any uh, business management people – uh, maybe perhaps uh, business management expertise from the University of Rhode Island, possibly Brown, Bryant, or some college look at this management proposal. It is professional. An excellent one from North Professional East, lunacy. It is professional lunacy. Yes, Mr. Ms. Dr. Ajay. Uh, Mr. Mudge, um, I just want to respond to your comments by making the following comment myself. Um, you were wholeheartedly in favor of the eLert report that said that we should go from eight uh, workers to seven workers. Mm -hmm. uh, you were all for the idea of the town's uh, Jason Albuquerque, who now has resigned, um, taking over in replacement of Rich Booth. And so I question, isn't that exactly the same thing? No. That, well, you're, you're basically saying that, well, one of them is doing nothing because now i got one person doing two jobs. Uh, I have said all along that we don't have enough people, that uh, the eLert report was very clear, that we have a difficult time uh, getting to requests for computer repairs and that sort of thing. It takes a little longer than we would like because we don't have enough staff. That's from eLert. That's not from me. Okay. And yet, uh, you know, it seems like we're getting APRA request after APRA request to prove that point. I don't understand why we would spend $40,000 even for an ELIT report to prove that point, because I could have told you that right from the beginning. Well, why didn't so you? So I did. Well, you didn't. So, you know, I could, I could certainly use more staff. I could certainly use my own IT manager. In fact, the person is very busy. And I don't know how we're going to pull this off. But I'm willing to make this difficult move on behalf of the pressure that I continually get from you and from members of the town council and the school committee, because we all want to save money, to save money, to try something out. The plan that you mentioned, which is so detailed from, from you know, eLERT and then the consolidation committee, is basically let Mr. Albuquerque run the IT department for North Kingstown School Department and figure out all the details later. That's not okay? true. That's problematic to me. As I, and I've been upfront and honest with you. So you when you it. say, you know, you got a big problem with one guy doing what two people used to do, well, so do I. But you suggested it earlier. You're mischaracterizing so, my point of order, statement. Madam that, Chair, point of order, please. Uh, well, you're uh, a pro at mischaracterizing, order, so Mr. you should know. Dr. Uge has the floor. So, you know, um, I'm not going to go back and forth with you, Mr. Mudge, about this. We've done plenty of this tonight. But, you know, I just want to call, call you when, you know, you're doing exactly the same. You're calling me on a problem which you have advocated for in the past. So, you know, you can't have it both ways. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe I'll respond then. Thank you. Sure. Now, Mr. Mike, still, you have you, you still, used all your five minutes. And still, what we agreed upon when we started this, that each committee member would get five minutes. So well, I'm going I, I to think Dr. Go Ajay back took to up my, a good part of my five minutes. Dr. rang before Dr. Ajay started to speak. That was the loud oh, beep, beep, beep. you had the clock going, so, huh? Okay. Yes, I've had the clock going okay. every way. Thank you. Mrs. Avanzato, you have two minutes and 22 seconds remaining in your time. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to use that. I just 
I just want to make the point that not every single thing in this plan may pan out, and that's what the discussion is going to be about. But the kind of attitude like, well, we can't do this, is not the attitude that you can consolidate with. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Both sides have to come together and work together. That's all. Mr. Welch, did you want to take any more of your time? Yes, i just say one quick thing that I neglected to say uh, what uh, John Buscatton said, uh, Dr. O'Shea. Um, I think that you made a very concise, concrete proposal with your staff. And uh, while it may uh, take some massaging, uh, it's a place to start from that we haven't had up until this point. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Buscardin, did you you have three minutes and 56 seconds <laughs> oh. to, have, um, to have more of your time. I will, I will pass. Okay. Well, then I will take my five so, minutes, how about, although I don't know if I'll need it all. Are we going on a second round here, I thought? We'll discuss that. Excuse um, me? I said that we would each get our five minutes at the beginning of it, oh. and then after we had our five minutes, we would then decide as a committee if we would need to take more time. Well, it is so in America. So right now... It is my five minutes, and okay. then we can decide as a committee if we need to give each member more time. Like first grade. All right. Well, I guess the one thing I do like is that many times we as politicians are not always very practical when we try to come up with some way that we are going to um, be looking at organizing staff because we're not the people who are really down there in the trenches. We're the oversight committee. And so what I do see is this is a plan that is coming from an administrator. And so in that way, I look at it as having somebody who deals with these, um, with these, um, the, the people who deals with the numbers and that sort of thing all the time. Now, the, the one thing I will say is that right now in the, both the town and the schools, the um, town has Trish Sunderland, Sunderland, and the schools have Ned Draper who, for a short more time, and they work full time at their jobs, and they're both very busy. So in order to implement this plan will be very difficult because we are taking two people who work full-time positions, and we are saying, no, we would consolidate them into people who work part-time. But when you come into difficult budgetary times, people have been asking us repeatedly to come up with a plan that we can save money, and that's what this does. And so we had many emails from the town council members. Um, I had town council members asking me, um, saying, look, you have to work with Dr. Roger and, and figure out something. And, and all I said to Dr. Roger is, what can we do? Um, this was not something that, that I stuck my nose into because, again, that's not my area of expertise. So Dr. Roger presented me with the plan last week. I said, I think it looks good. I think this is something that um, has possibilities. So at this time, what I would say is that, Dr. Jay, I'm extremely pleased that you've met the goal that we've set in coming up with a plan. Thank you. And um, I think this is exactly what the, the RIASC meeting was talking about on Friday, is looking at towns and cities and how are you going to do things differently with less money. I mean, in this proposal, it basically is 200000 less than what our um, town and schools combined are using. It's a starting point. One of the things, though, I did hear last night at the town council meeting that made me a little leery was that I heard it said by the town manager that he had seen the plan and he was concerned that there could be 16 um, town ordinances that it may violate and that he wanted to wait till after the budget to start some sort of a um, consolidation process. I don't think this plan foregoes that because this plan is a starting point. And that's all we're asking, is that we're putting out a starting point, and if the town is not ready before the budget plan is over, I understand that, because this is a long process to go through the budget. And so I don't want anybody to think that we are rushed. I mean, it's the sort of thing, yes, we're hiring someone now, yes, we're going to be, at, we're going to be interviewing people this week, but that does not preclude that we can still not go forward with this plan. So it's one of those things of I don't want the town to think because we've put out a detailed plan that that's it, you know, nothing more. We need to have an answer tomorrow. It's the sort of thing they can take their time. If they need to wait till after budget, that's fine. 
And this plan does not preclude that, therefore, it is the only plan we will ever look at again. This is, we are a town. We work together. So it's the sort of thing of we put out a proposal, and then if the town says this is unworkable for these reasons, then I would say come back to us with another proposal, and we'll talk about it some more. But we've taken the first step with something detailed, something specific, and where we're going. And now we await, and we will um, hopefully hear something back from the town um, after the budget season. Uh, I move the question, please. Go ahead. I have a couple of other questions, please. Once somebody moves the question, you, there's no debate, so you need to second the motion to move the question. Incredible. All right. So we've had a motion to move the question in a second. We need to take a roll call vote on that, Laureen. Kimberly Page. Yes. Richard Wells. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. John Biscarden. Yes. William Mudge. God forbid no. All right. Motion passes for one. So now, Laureen, we need a roll call vote on the motion to approve the superintendent's consolidation proposal. Okay. Richard Wells. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. John Biscarden. Yes. William Mudge. No. Kimberly Page. Yes. Thank you. Motion passes four to one. Great. It is 925. Um, I know that um, we have the next item on the agenda is GCB. Um, I know that there are some committee members who would um, like to wait to, to ask more questions. I guess. Um, we, we um, in order to renew the contracts that are reliant on this policy, um, we can only wait till the next meeting. So if we don't discuss it tonight, we should definitely discuss it at our next meeting, maybe make it one of the first things that we go to to make sure we we'll, we'll be discussing Davisville Elementary at that meeting. So those two items should probably be the, the main two pieces because this, this could require a, a little bit of discussion. The only thing I would ask the committee is, do you want Dr. Auger to give an overview? And then um, we don't have to have any more discussion at that. And if you want to go one-on-one, -on -one, you'll at least have the overview of him explaining it once to everyone. I could give a quick um, five minute, just so people understand. So long as we don't have any questions right just, tonight. Just to give you kind of a preview of what th this is. Um, uh, uh, are you okay with that? I'm okay with okay. that. I want to know if the rest of the committee is okay with that. Is that just on GCB? Correct. Okay. And it's just the superintendent who's going to be talking about it, and then we'll discuss it at the next meeting. But we Correct. can't make any comments on it? Not this meeting. That's what I, I want to establish. Waver it. We can't make any comments, and what are, we talk, what are we here for? To hear the superintendent. He runs the school district. All right. So, Dr. Ajay. <laughs> You're down right. Yeah. Okay. Um, this, um, this proposal that I have in front of you, uh, GCB, um, I'm not even sure what those letters actually mean, to tell you the truth, but it's a policy that we have in our district around uh, personnel benefits for uh, administrative and supervisory positions. And in years past, um, we have had basically a policy where uh, all of the people who are not part of the teacher's contract and have uh, oversight over different departments like uh, human resources, uh, superintendent, assistant superintendent, uh, other, other principals, um, a lot of the, the administrative positions in the district and supervisory positions would have their salary be indexed off of the top step teacher salary. So, uh, for instance, if um, you know, in the case of the superintendent right now, um, my, my salary is 1.89 off of the, the, uh, the salary of, the top, of a, top, a step 10 teacher. And so what I am proposing is that all of these um, positions, and that includes superintendent, assistant superintendent, director of administrative services, director of pupils, uh, personnel, all of our principals, all of our assistant principals, food service manager, network manager, human resources supervisor, transportation supervisor, controller, payroll supervisor, and the uh, superintendent's administrative assistant all have an index off of this. I've done uh, a lot of work looking at local uh, salaries that are similar to the positions that um, we're looking at. I feel confident that what I have put before you, um, where there are adjustments made off of the old policy, that they reflect fair market value as I, as I see it right now. I also wanted to be mindful 
that we're working through that, you know, looking at similar jobs or, or the other jobs within the district that we're, we're paying people a fair wage for in comparison to what other people in the district make for doing, you know, similar roles or, or, you know, the amount of time that they work over the year, that sort of thing. In a couple of instances, um, I have noticed that some people, um, for instance, the director of pupil personnel, um, that is a position that I've said before on this stage that I feel uh, Mrs. Santa is below the, the range significantly and that in her case this would move her salary up uh, to a point where she's within that range in, in the proper place. Now the way we currently do things um, with the administrators is the administrators have a merit pay program where and that is something that Dr. Thornton instituted and wanted to uh, move to, toward that with teachers. Um, because he felt that Commissioner Gist was starting to move in that direction with some of the things she was pointing out, and this would be a good way to, um, to you know, uh, compensate um, people based on reaching their goals. And, and I think that members of the school committee also saw that as a, as a convenient thing to do in the event that, you know, administrative salaries, just like what we saw tonight with the renewal and non-renewal of our uh, uh, athletic director, they always come up in the spring, right, when we're talking about the budget. So you have a, a really difficult budget session where everyone's talking about how difficult things are, and lo and behold, there are a bunch of salaries that come up that have to be renewed. Well, the, the, you know, what seems to be the right thing to do every time that comes up is to say, well, we'll give a 0% increase. And those people always get caught in that log jam. Whereas the teachers who negotiate salaries once every three years, they may say, well, we'll do, you know, a 1%, a 1%, a 1%, or something on that idea, which is certainly you know, frugal and, and responsible in its own right, but that issue doesn't come up every year. And so um, what I'm trying to do is to put us in a fair condition with the teachers. If the, if the teachers go up by 1%, then my salary and the salary of all of the administrators will go up by 1%. If the teachers take a zero in a given year, then everyone on this list will take a zero in that particular year. Now, there is a, a step issue here similar to the teachers. The teachers between step one and step ten for their first ten years of work uh, have a difference of about $32,000 in their pay as they move up. And, and, and that is a, a, a traditional thing to do in most organizations, including schools. And what it does is it says we, uh, we value you having experience in this work and we're willing to pay you so that a brand new whippersnapper off the street who comes in is not making the exact same salary as someone who's been in the district for, say, 15 years and has a lot of veteran experience. That's a, a regular thing to do in all businesses. So that would also be something that happens with the administrators. But that administrative um, step increase program is much lower than that. Uh, for the administrators, for any administrator, including myself, the entirety of that is the equivalent in, in today's dollars and cents of $7,200. And that increase would happen over the course of 20 years. So every two years, it would go up one-tenth of this range. And in, in real dollars, because the top step teacher currently is making $72,900, and, and this is a, a one-tenth uh, of that range, that over the course of 20 years, that person's salary would increase by seven thousand um, dollars which is pretty minimal in any, in any every two years what that means is that a person's salary may go up about seven hundred dollars which again honors the years in service and it's and it's what would distinguish for instance uh, Morag Cronkite being a, a, a higher paid uh, a elementary principal than Karen Seitler Karen Seitler first year experience at Fishing Cove Morag Cronkite has been in the district for many years and it would be unfair if they were paid exactly the same because they have uh, varying, uh, they have different experience. And, and again, it would be something to honor that experience. So what, what I'm putting forward, and, and we will discuss this next time, is basically um, something to kind of set this in, in motion and to forget it. That, that every year, every administrator's contract will just say, your salary will, um, you know, we're going to renew, but when we renew, it will be based on this program. That um, it, it will not be a decision that we have to make arbitrarily every year. Say, well, this year the budget's hard, so we'll give all these people a zero. But last year, this, the people who had their, their contracts renewed, well, they got a 1% increase. 
and you know, and this group we're going to do a zero, that this group we're going to do a one, this group we're going to go backwards. It just takes all that out of it. If the teachers take a zero, we will take a zero alongside with them. It's perfectly fair that way. It ends the whole criticism that, well, the superintendent's getting a nice raise, but the teachers aren't. <coughs> that whole thing. That all goes away. So for, for the case of um, Dr. Humbert and myself, we just got new contracts. Once our contracts are done, we move right into this formula. And for the, you know, so uh, to me, that's fair. And, um, and, and you know, I, so that's what this is all about. It's about fairness. It's about um, getting these issues of, of salaries out of the limelight in, in, in a way that we know it's being taken care of in a very fair and equitable, equitable way that, that acknowledges fair market value for positions. And, um, and because we're moving from a merit pay system, which includes $35,000 to, to make merit pay payments, and moves to this system, we actually save in administrative salaries in year one $15,000. And in the second year, when additional administrative salaries come up, that year we would save $11,000. So this is a move toward a more fair system of paying our leaders. Um, they would not be making, you know, there would never be a point where they're making any kind of uh, major, you know, advancement in their pay. It would go up in an orderly fashion along with everybody else. And, um, and we save money. If we weren't saving money, I'd have a hard time proposing this. But we would save $15,000. So you can take that, this consolidation piece and this other piece together that we're talking about right now, there are proposals on the tables tonight to save $230,000. And next time when we talk about Davisville Elementary, we're going to be talking about another couple hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, we're making some money-saving moves. We're, we're trying to be creative, trying to save people money, and I hope people recognize that. And, you know, um, I'd be happy to hear from anybody about your, your – um, questions you may have about this, this is in the packet, so it's something that you can look at if you want to, and certainly members of the committee, if you need to talk to me about this over the next two weeks, I'd be more than happy to sit down with you and go over the details. Thank you. I'd like to add just two comments, please. We could save $35,000 and get rid of the Madam Chair, pay. point of order. One. And two, point of order. why Madam aren't I these, you, why aren't the these salaries up. adjustments based on job performance? Why are they automatic? Why are they automatic? Since, since you've been allowed to ask that question, I, I, I included an article for you. It is uh, about a book called, um, called Drive by Daniel Pink. It's a very popular book right now, and it's something that I've learned about. Um, and it, it, um, it mentions merit pay in this, and um, it is something that um, I have recently looked into in a, a great deal. And, um, and this person concludes that we have 50 years of research on merit pay, and it is very unlikely to work. A Vanderbilt study looked at middle school math teachers in Nashville public schools. Half the teachers had a chance to win a $15,000 bonus. Half of them got a regular salary over a few years. What was the difference in the performance among their students? Zero. New York City public schools just pulled a plug on an elaborate teacher bonus system after spending $56 million because the Rand Corp found it had zero effect. I feel like we just keep doing this over and over again. It, if if so, uh, you know what, the, the science shows pretty clearly that if I knock a glass off the table, it's going to fall to the ground and break. And we say, well, we'll just ignore it. Let's just try it again. We have tried this in this district. I don't see any of our administrators working any harder because of the merit pay um, that they've had. They're all conscientious professionals, and they work hard anyway, and they get great results. And I, I, I would like anyone to show me evidence that we were getting, you know, somehow significantly worse results from our administrators or that they cared less because they didn't have a merit pay uh, five or six years ago but had it last year. So. Uh, I'm going with the research that I've done. I've heard from several areas that show that there is no benefit in education to a merit pay system, and replacing it with something that I think is a fair and equitable uh, route to paying administrators and saving money in the process. Um, so, you know, I hope that you'll support me on this, and, you know, we'll talk about it more in a couple of weeks. Well, I agree Thank with you. you. We should get rid of all merit pay. Thank you, Mr. Munch. But Mudge. then I'm not the step pay should right not now. be automatic. They should be job performance. Thank you, Mr. Mudge.
Dr. Roger, um, since we're not going to be vote, taking a vote in the GCB tonight, obviously we won't be doing the administrator's um, contracts either. Right. So does that take us to G, discussion of Director of Administrative Services position? Yes. Um, what, I, what I want to um, point out, you know, uh, even though we, we did talk about a consolidation effort, we, we are going forward with um, trying to fill that position. We have a group of, of very good candidates, we feel. Um, and, um, you know, and we will inform them that this uh, proposal is out there that it, it may be something that, um, who knows, the town council may say, let's try this right away, or it may require a lot of discussion and back and forth, and it may be a while before we go down this road, uh, or if we do it at all. Uh, but the candidates for the position will, will understand that that's uh, what's involved. Um, in the meantime, while, you know, while there is a transition, um, you know, I have asked Mr. Draper, and he has accepted to, you know, uh, on a, you know, kind of an hourly basis type of format to be available to us to uh, help us through the budget season and, and yes, even to come to more of these meetings if we need him. Um, and uh, so he has graciously accepted uh, the offer to do so. And so we'll be taken care of um, with his uh, support and with the support of uh, Steve Janelle, our controller, who is tremendous as well. Um, uh, Mr. Janelle is, uh, does not have the certification necessary to move to uh, Mr. Draper's position. I'm not sure that he would want to even if he did. But he is uh, happy as a clam doing the, the work that he does, and he does a great job for us, so we're happy to have him there. Um, so that's where we are, and, and the, the item after that on the agenda is, um, you know, if We're if going he, to withdraw that position, that item number H, H as I understood. Uh, say that again, please. You were going to withdraw item number H is what you told me um, prior to the meeting? Um, yes, uh, you know I, I'm I'm willing to to entertain that, um, you know, but um, you know that's that's up to you. Hmm. So, are you withdrawing the item from um, here or not? That's what I need to know, Doctor. Okay, uh, I, I withdraw. Yes. Well, excuse me. I, I I don't think that you can withdraw an item once it's on the agenda before the, the committee. Uh, you this is the superintendent's recommendation, oh, I understand. and he's withdrawing his recommendation. <laughs> and so, I would like to know yes. why. Okay. Well, I don't think we have to go through why. If you would like to ask him that after the meeting, you may. Oh, it's on the but agenda. It's being withdrawn from the meeting, and so we're going to the next item. Well, there. excuse me. May, may, no, um, I'm not recognizing have an appointment you. school committee member for job search, research search. Why aren't, why don't we have a school committee member on that, number one? Number two is, why didn't we ever see the, the job description that was po posted? Because, in fact, Mr. Draper couldn't even apply for the job. Mr. Thank Draper you, Mr. could Mudge. not apply like for the job. If you would like to look at the school spring, it you, was all we, public knowledge. It was Maybe not all public knowledge. Like we didn't have an input. Why do we have to have, why do we have to have a, why do we have to have, Madam Chairman? No, why do we have to have a, a, a business director that has to have a teacher's certificate. A teacher's certificate. Why didn't we look at that? Why didn't we get an input into the type of individual we wanted to have here, like maybe a CPA? We don't need a teacher, nor do we need to have the people that are uh, 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 Mr. Mudge, you can okay. I understand and you by want the way, to speak. Why did they have to put a, saying, a, a thesis in on education as part of this submission? It's part of the agenda. Uh, well, well, you don't so, want to let the people know what we're doing, do you? You don't want to let the people know what's oh, going on. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, we're going now to number I, review of the negotiation subcommittee for purposes of arbitration. Mr. Welch, I believe you put this on the agenda. Oh, oh he's okay. Mrs. Avanzato, did you want to speak to this? Yes, I would. Um, it just, it seems to me that when the, the committee has now moved into arbitration, that the, in the past, it's been the entire committee who then becomes involved in the issues in terms of being like a subcommittee almost, and the attorneys usually come back and forth to the school committee as a whole during arbitration, or at least that's the way it was previously. As I, as I understand it, uh, Madam Chair, <clears throat> during the arbitration uh, process, um, 
all school committee members would be at the beck and call of the arbitrators. Is that not correct, Mrs. Carroll? Correct. So, <clears throat> you know, the, the subcommittee now is, is kind of a moot point because we're beyond that. It's the school committee. Well, not really. The superintendent's been negotiating, you know, unofficially without, you know, any school committee members participating in that. Right, but at this point, if there would be any sort of uh, resolution, it still has to come before the full school committee. It would not become before the subcommittee, um, because in prior times when we were having our negotiations, we would meet as a subcommittee with um, the subcommittee of the union. Well, I and guess that, that didn't happen. no more. I because guess it was a moving, after we completed the, the mediation and we're now into arbitration. So there is no, um, there isn't going to be anything where you're the subcommittee meets. It is either the oh, arbitration okay. hearing or it is the full com um, school committee to decide but, yes but, or no. But why has Dr. O'Shea been meeting with the union unofficially to talk about the contract? Why not? Perfectly within my right to do yeah, so. I was going to say, oh, it's, again, it was uh, a my feeling about that is is that if it's, I find that there is any kind of you know, and, and you've asked to do this before, Mr. Mudge, you said why can't we continue talking? Absolutely. So, so why so don't we talk? What, what, what I what I am because it's a very arduous process when you get everybody together. So what I'm trying to do is streamline it a little bit, see if we can make some progress, and if we can, then I would ask for the committee to come back together. And, and, and but, but there are other of, subcommittee uh, members. Uh, it, 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 I am not meeting uh, with the superintendent in these meetings. This is purely we, we, we have had months and months of committee work trying to do this, and we have not gotten very far at all. So you know, um, so you know, if if I can make some headway uh, by taking a little bit of extra time, using some my time at night, and, and Mr. Draper's as well, by talking offline and seeing if we can come up with oh. something where. We, we can get to the zone where I know the school committee wants to get to, then, you know, I'm willing to do that. But, it, you know, so far, but I don't have anything to report back Regardless to of the other members that are on the Ms. negotiating Carroll. committee. Ms. Carroll and then Mrs. Avanzato. The, the subcommittee for the union, as well as the subcommittee for the school committee, reached an impasse. Um, upon reaching an impasse, we then therefore asked for arbitration. We have um, some dates for arbitration. Um, they are um, in the middle of April. In the meantime, those two committees have no further position because we've reached an impasse. What's happening right now is the superintendent, as the chief executive officer of the school department, is unofficially speaking to the union. And they're talking. All they're doing is talking in hopes <laughs> that they can avoid arbitration. So at this point now, Why wouldn't the talking the is going on. Sub -sub Whatever do that. talking is going on, will then will possibly, even if they get somewhere, will go to the arbitrator. Maybe at that point we'll have some kind of a settlement, or we'll continue with the arbitration. If we have a settlement, we'll bring it back to the full committee. There's no further need for the lawyers. There's no further need for the um, union representative or for any members of the of the two separate subcommittees. To, to talk anymore, we're in arbitration. What the superintendent is doing is he's unofficially speaking to his staff in an attempt to work this out. I applaud him for volunteering to do that. I certainly hope that, that he does make some headway. But right now, we are, we're on an arbitration mode. So basically, there is no subcommittee. The full committee would have to make any decisions. Well, I think you ought to, you ought to uh, then obviously uh, uh, terminate the subcommittee. All right. Is there a motion to terminate the subcommittee? Motion to motion. dissolve the subcommittee. Second. second. There's been a motion made and seconded. Mm -hmm. So, Lorraine, if we could take a roll call vote. I just have one comment. Linda Avanzato. Yes. Yes. Don Biscarden. Yes. William Mudge. No. Kimberly Page. Yes. Richard Welsh. Yes. Motion passes four to one. Mrs. Evans, I, I sorry, I had you written down after Ms. Carroll, and I um, and I did not uh, acknowledge you. What, what? I, I just was going to point out that Mr. Mudge is criticizing the superintendent for talking with the union, but Mr. Mudge, as a member of the subcommittee, was copying in the union on private discussions and emails between the com between the school committee, and he copied the union in. You can't do that. Yeah, that I, and I submitted. It, by the way, I submitted it in public to this committee. Because I asked for 
information. Excuse me. As I'm to, talking. Mrs. Abendar has the floor. You always Mrs. tell Mrs. half Abendar the story. Mrs. Abendar has the floor. I, I gave everything Mrs. to this Abendar committee. Mrs. Abendar has the floor. Here, go ahead. I made my point. Yeah, you made your point. I wanted to get backup information to go in to see what was going on. I couldn't get any information from the lawyer, from the superintendent, and anybody. I didn't know what we were doing. And I put that in writing, and I submitted it to this committee. You did, Mr. Mudge. What I was extremely unhappy about is that you also, that was, you were having com um, confidential information um, that was being sent out to the union and the school committee. I had no and confidential information did, in there. You were trying to also engage private citizens. I had all no. All of our negotiations are supposed to be, be just between all us All I can and say is read what I sent oh. to the committee. Yes. And like okay? I said, you had other people who were not in the school committee on that email. So yeah, that, that, the email is public. I made was, it public here. It shouldn't be. It's it was inappropriate. It is. Our negotiations are according to what we agreed in our our bylaws with our negotiations, where it's everything. There is wasn't complete. any negotiations going on. I was just trying to gather information to and understand what our position have included was. Public citizens. I just. It was a request. It was an open request. Can we move on? All right, our next thing is J, resolution for bonding arbitration. Make a motion to approve the resolution. I'll second that motion. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to approve um, the opposition to um, House Bill 76. Um, 7617. 17. Um, and 7620. And 7620. Um, do we have any further discussion? Yes, uh, Mrs. Avanzato and then Dr. Roger. I just, it's incredible that we keep facing these things popping up in the legislature. You know, right when we think we've gotten past it, they bring it up again. You know, no matter how many people came out to testify, and there were a lot of people that came out to testify, or how the whole state and all the taxpayers of this state are against continuation of contracts and binding arbitration, we continue to see this over and over and over again. And it's very disappointing that we have to keep putting efforts towards something that we've already said no to, but that's Rhode Island, I guess. Well, you're not talking to your Democratic Roger. colleagues. I just, I just want to say, you know, um, Mr. August made some interesting points about, you know, when, when you call to, to testify at these, uh, these hearings, it can seem like it's falling on deaf ears because you may get just a portion of the committee coming out to even hear you speak. But I, I do want to commend Mr. Welch for, for showing up for us and, and, and speaking on behalf of North Kingstown. I appreciate his willingness to do so. And, and I think it, you know, it registers with them that we are accounted for in this, and, and I appreciate it because it, it's, it's very difficult for any of us to get there. Um, and uh, so I, I just want to say I appreciate it to Mr. Welch. I'm not sure we were Mr. all Welch. invited. Uh, this was a public hearing, and I just want to say that I identified myself as a taxpayer of North Kingstown and as uh, vice chair of the committee, but not speaking for the committee. I submitted last year's resolution, which was unanimous, which I was chair of at the time, and, and made the committee aware of the fact that we would be hearing uh, and hopefully voting in favor of this resolution this evening. I would also tell you that <clears throat> this bill was submitted by Representative McCauley, who will not be running again. <clears throat> it's kind of convenient, folks. Mr. Welch, I appreciate you going up there to testify. I also know that um, Kathy Kaiser from Jamestown was also there testifying. So um, our school committees work closely together, so it was also helpful to have her there. So thank you very much. All right, seeing no other hands, let's take a roll call vote. Lorene? Richard Welch? Yes. Linda Avanzato? Yes. John Biscardin? Yes. William Mudge? I'm going to abstain. I didn't really read the legislation. Kimberly Page. Yes. Motion passes four to one. All right. So that was the motion saying that we opposed the binding arbitration, just to make sure that that's clear. And my, I abstain, too. Yes, I got it's that. Thank you. I, I didn't that. Uh, read that. All right. Um, it is... 9.53, Dr. Auger, um, is there, uh, you want to talk about bus transportation consulting uh, I, services, I, or I is this something that? I am all set for the evening. I'm good. 
I make a motion to adjourn. Uh, how about correspondence, I'll please? That motion. I'll second correspondence. The motion well, we have a motion on the floor to uh, adjourn. So if the motion does not pass, we can discuss the correspondence. So, Lorraine, could we take a, a roll call vote? Is this why you put it out of order from the beginning of the meeting to the end of the meeting, Madam Chairman? Unbestarded. That's pretty sneaky. John Biscard. You moved it from the beginning of the meeting to the end so you could vote it out so we don't talk about correspondence. Um, um, no, I'd like to hear some correspondence. <clears throat> William Munch. No. Kimberly Page. Yes. Richard Wells. Yes. Linda Avanzano. Motion passes three to two. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. I will much. submit my correspondence.